Conversation with the big guy Ryback. I am the big guy Ryback, and today I have the man who is considered the GOAT in powerlifting, the greatest of all time, with over 71 world records. He, he is respected by everyone in the game, ladies and gentlemen, none other than Mr. Ed Cohn. How's everything going today? Pretty good. The uh, I want to talk. Good. How are you feeling after after the the deal down there at Bio Accelerator? I was really worried after like four weeks because the the the, uh, the sharp pains in my shoulder where the tears are were like, like <laughs> let me let me know I'm, I'm quite alive. But uh, when I hit like the five week mark, I started instead of just sitting on my ass, um, I started doing some range of motion stuff. And I, I first started doing some little stuff from Andrew Locke, his big three. Yeah. And my scapula started moving right away. And then I switched over to a friend of mine from uh, Florida, um, a Dr. Tony Rogers. On, on Instagram, he's like, Rogers Reset. So we started doing some re reset stuff and range of motion exercises lying on the floor. And then all of a sudden, it clicked. Really? And I, 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 I felt some pain start to go away. Where were the tears? And like I said, uh, uh, a par all partials, yep. labrum, supraspinatus, and scub subscap tendon. Okay. And it's all, all wear and tear just from all the years. When did you, now for you too, like when did that, when did, I guess, when did that start for you? Was it later in your career where you started? It noticing? started, it, yeah, it started, it, it was, it was after I had already quit and, um, then it started, and it was a slow process. So I would do change my grip and do other things and get away with it and not address the problem as yeah. you know most people fucking do. I ran away from it, but it just train, continued getting worse. That's what I did for a long time. Is I would still train really hard and just I felt so good that I was still able to get a good workout in, but I was actually probably doing more damage. Did, did that go on? Definitely, for a bit, we're, in the, we're in denial. Yeah. Yeah, we're in den total total denial, and then all of a sudden it it was almost impossible to even get underneath a squat bar. And if I tried the bench on the way down and up, yep, it would be like it would it, it would sound like boom 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 boom, yeah. just like that all the way up and down. So then it wasn't fun anymore. So I started to look for viable options then. Hello. Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, sorry. The, the yeah, no, that That's was right. the, the I was gonna. I wanted to talk to you about that too, because it's the the mental aspect of this of when your body, and I experienced it fairly young here for me, and it's been mentally the most uh, frustrating thing in the world. But it, it's almost all been overcome, which is um, kind of a, a miracle in my mind with where I was even. But did you did you struggle mentally with that? You know, from being legitimately one of the strongest human beings in the world to then all of a sudden like feel yeah, that the, go the, away. The, the, it's the, the, the frustration of not being able to be you. Yeah. It's and, you know, pain, we're, we're used to pain. I mean, uh, hell, the, the, the pain you guys go through when you're on the road for a while and stuff is enormous. And I, it, it just, I used to pride myself on being able to take pain, but there comes a point when it when it doesn't stop and it messes yeah. up your sleep and then you can't get your t shirt on or you yeah. got it or you can't buckle your seatbelt and you get an extender or something. Yeah. It's it's not good. It's not good. What was the point for you? Because so I I, for me, I, I was it was for me waking up in the morning and I'd left WWE and the pain the the toradol and cortisone they were giving me that covered up my stuff. I couldn't put my mm -hmm. pants and my underwear on in the morning. My boxers, I couldn't bend down. I was on literally trying to use my foot and like do this Houdini act and I couldn't, I was in so much pain and that's when I realized, I was like, I have to figure, I can't run from this anymore. What, did you have a moment where you said, yeah, like, there, I have was, to address this? Yeah, where, uh, when I went to put on my, my left shoulder in the front, the label tear was worse than the right. And when I try to put on my sock, 
by myself and extend that sh- that left sh- shoulder over, yep. it would grab, and like I would just have to slowly move my arm back the other way. Yeah. And <laughs> yelled, at, yelled at my wife, Hega, um, Hega, and <laughs> she knew exactly what I needed. Then I, then I just bought, I took the easy way out and bought a sock slipper. <laughs> Man, I would too, like on meet and greets with fans, even when I, because I wrestled for a couple years, even when I started the stem cells, I couldn't, like when people would, uh, I'd have to reach across and shake their hand with my right hand. I started oh. actually using my left. Because people will shake my hand, and a lot of people too. If you're a, a bigger guy, or they think you're strong, they think they got to give you their. They best. shake you. Yeah, and people would be shake my yeah, shoulder. Yeah, they don't just squeeze your hand; the they joint. shake you. Yeah. Oh. And I and it would it would I wanted to get up and punch them in the face, and I'm trying to you know obviously yeah. not going to do that, but it was causing me so much pain. I was like, I can't even shake someone's hand, and, and, and like re- just reaching out, my lat was all atrophied, and my arm was atrophying. Yeah. It's that's why I'm always interested in with people. What other people go through because for me it was mentally like it was hard it was like losing my identity uh in a very slow quick and quick pro- way essentially but it is because you know when when you've done it for so long it's not a hobby it's like part of who you are yeah. because it's your your mental release and and you just love the way you are i i i i like to look in the mirror if i'm in shape i like the way i feel i like the way i can perform in the gym or or outside the gym with little things, and it, it it took it all away from me. It's almost too like the Ronnie Coleman. I understand what he's going through, and still wanting to train and everything with him, it, because it's his identity, and you, and it's who you are, and it's what you love, and it, it's really, I think, for people, it's a psychiatrist. Yeah, it, it's but we, our our life is based around uh, who we are physically. And, and that's what we're known for. And it, it's a really, I've always, it's something that's really fascinating to me. I mean, just like I, my, my, I, my nickname is the big guy. And I always ask my, I go, well, I'm not, I, what if I'm not the big guy? Who am I? It, it's, it, cause it's, oh. we have to have something to fall back on eventually, or we have to face that at some point. So it, it's, I like talking to other people about this. Cause for me, it's been a, a, a real mental awakening and allowed me to do a lot of other things. Yeah. The mental, the mental aspect is crazy. Yeah. When I had my first, uh, hip replacement because my family has a history of osteo-rheumatoid arthritis so I, I'm the one that got that part and the doctor I went like two years without having my hip done to the point when I was on crutches and crying all the time and I was over in Norway I got it done in Norway because they were pretty much ahead of what they'd allowed here and that's where my wife's from and the doctor leaned down and said you will soon forget all the pain you were in and just like that, it was gone. And you can recall a little bit of the pain you were in, but it's not the same, and it's gone. It's just gone. That's what. That's all I want. I want to be pain-free, healthier, yeah. and be able to lift a little bit of weight so I can lie about the weights I lift. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to look good enough. With with a hip replacement like that, are you able to still you still do everything then, pretty much? Yeah, I can squat and deadlift, no problem. What are you doing now? Are you still like in the obvious? I tell people like for me too with my injuries that I went through, and I had other people I was talking to. Like I went through a denial phase because I had the, the my back's all better now, but I had I need. They told me I needed a five disc fusion, and I could I had atrophy down my Jeez. leg, and I started lying to myself saying like squats are bad for you, deadlifts are bad for you, and because and then I would confirm that by finding research articles or articles by doctors or people that would say squats are bad for you, but. I don't believe that. I think they're actually really good for you when you do them properly. Yeah, you could you could find anything contrary to anything, yep. any bullshit study or article. I agree. Um, I could still squat and deadlift. I could almost right after surgery, what? and that that probably saved me a, a lot. Now I, I, I got a really old old generation one safety squat bar that I use at the gym, and I can still put some weight on there and uh, get a little endorphin release and pump my legs up a little bit. That, I do the same thing. I've, I've been using the safety squat bar save because my shoulder and I was in training with Nick Best a little bit. We started. I started actually doing regular squats again, but I still have a little bit of issues getting that. Getting I can't do a low bar squat right now because I can't get into position on my right side yet. But I it's actually mm-hmm. improved tremendously. But that safety squat bar, man, what a what a piece of a, of equipment. It's 
like you said, yeah, it's a saver. Still work, and it saves those shoulders from getting in that position. But I obviously can't do and it. Much and it's not it's not that easy either. No. And it makes it uh, a lot of times. It makes it harder. The one we got is a uh, it it barely it has little nubs at the top. It doesn't have handles, so you reach up and you pull it down, and you're slightly bent over. So it's it's all like a real power squat, like button hamstrings. Really. So you go. Yeah, it's nice. The, it, it, it keeps me good. With the with, so with the bio accelerator, and you go down there, and, and, and it's been how long has it been? A couple months now since you went down. Three months. Uh, almost. It's 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 like no, it's only like uh, uh, six and a half weeks. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, that's what for me. It, t- it takes usually a good four weeks for that stuff to kind of set in, and then it just starts hitting you at different phases of like you just make these little jumps. But it's enough to where, like for me, it, it was it like it took away all my back remaining back pain I had. But my shoulder, I, I'm going in for an MRI tomorrow. I got one more. I'm going to do one more procedure with my mm-hmm. through my insurance here in the states because I think they missed a couple areas because I, I didn't. They haven't been able to get an MRI on my lat. But it, it, there's there's something when you actually see that this stuff. I was talking to Steve Austin about this last week, and like a lot, of, like he's really skeptical on the whole thing, and, like, and I understand because. Uh, he, he's very old school as well, and, but this stuff, man, it, it's. Mm-hmm. I was telling, I've had fourteen of them, and I had no other choice. It was either get a five disc fusion and shoulder replacement, or in, in take pain. Yeah, pills, that's not like which I wasn't going to do, or take a chance on this new, you know, technology that we have. And to me, it was like I wasn't happy with the way I had to. Everything ended for me, and I'm young enough still, where like I feel better now than I felt in in ten years. But it, it's. Was it was it going down there for you? Were you skeptical at all going in? Yeah, I was. I was hopeful, but there was a lot of uh, um, negative thoughts mm-hmm. that I because I, I don't want to have to get surgery now. If I do eventually have to get surgery, it'll be a hell of a lot less than what I would have had to do. Yeah. And so, um, as I was getting the stuff, and they were talking to me. Um, it helped because they're all positive and yeah. and and that's what I needed to hear. And I I mean that guy that they show in the uh commercial now, the guy the stroke guy. Yeah. I was sitting next to him one day get getting I V vitamins and the very next uh, he got his stem cells later on the very next day is when they took that video. So I was there with him. Really? Yeah. That's I was actually there, me and Kevin uh, Nash were the one of the kids that um Mm-hmm. He had he couldn't see he was in a, tra- a, a traumatic car accident as a uh, very young age his grandmother was actually killed and he uh, he he re- they, they re- was it restored the vision in was or the hearing in one side or the the vision in one of his eyes there was something it That's was crazy. unbelievable but his speech like he he had like he could not form sentences and he was down there for his second treatment when we were there and I saw him progress through the week where the first day we saw him, we couldn't understand him. And then by the end, the, my final day there, I was having a full-blown conversation with him, and it blew my mind that it, they were already the, uh, much of an effect what, what it do- Yes. What it does, uh, it, it seems to have a really good effect on neurological type stuff yeah. and nerve stuff right away. Yep. Right away. I wish, I mean, I wish it, it healed me a lot faster, but... I'll appreciate it when I when I feel better. It's it's getting out of pain. But I'm okay. I'm, I'm, I'm okay like with patience. It. Is such a like for me, and it's been three years. And but like I said, I'm out of pain now. But my shoulder, and it's, I'm, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. But I was like, I got to be careful because I, I in my head I'm being stubborn. I want I want to feel like I want to go back. I want to be better than I've ever been, and I feel like I will be. Mm-hmm. But I just have to be a little more patient. But and that's the tough part for a lot of us. I feel. Yeah, uh, when, when you get hurt. <laughs> and have enough pain for a long enough period of time. And it's not just a little pulled muscle or a little torn hamstring. Um, I think then you, it makes you grow up fast and realize how important what you have is. And like, I got to do this damn thing right or else I'm going to really be messed up. It's not worth it. You don't want that. It's your livelihood. No, it affects everything. Depression, especially. Forget that. Absolutely. That's something I'm just, a lot of people. You know, and, and I'm going. I'm going. 
No, go ahead. No, that we don't think about that with, with pain. And I've gone through it at multiple points. It's very, it, it's, it's a difficult thing for a lot of people to, and that's why I wanted to talk to you about that too for you. Because like, when you're competing and the, the adrenaline and then when it's all gone, and at the end of the day, you're left with the pain and, and the health issues. It, it's that old quote, we spend our, our health to make to get our wealth. And then, then we spend our wealth yeah. to try to get our health back. It, it's a very real thing. Yeah, your greatest strength will end up being your greatest weakness. That's what's going to bring you down. Yeah. And that's what happened. I prided myself on, this is nothing. This is. It doesn't matter if it's 1,000 pounds or 900 pounds or whatever, I'm going to do it. I'm not in pain. I'm fine. Yep. Then, you know, the year, whenever you do something to an extreme, it's going to catch up to you some way, somehow a little bit. Yeah. You know, I'm okay with it. And, and part of it will suck, but I'm okay with it. My pain is starting to leave. You know, now I'm in a phase where I could do some really light rehab stuff with some body weight stuff with just just arm swings and different stretches and some little things that you know I didn't I didn't I might have lost weight but I didn't really lose that much off my physique wise uh, because I have like a you know a, a base a base of uh, of like 45 45 years yeah underneath my body so it's not like it's all going to leave at once no it doesn't and uh, yeah, I've seen you. You look. You look. I mean, you're as thick as ever. Still, it's not even. I think too. Like for me, I, I lost a little, like maybe 15 pounds from what I was, but I could tell a difference over time. The muscle mass from doing uh, very light yeah. machines and like I had, I had to really pull back. And I was going every day still, but I, and I, I could just look in the mirror and tell my and my face and my neck was a little thinner and just it was. Uh, but I had to lift to just keep my my sanity. Because I, I feel like if I would have went the yeah. other way and just not lifted, I would have got really. That was the one thing keeping me afloat. It always has, no matter what. Just you can, like you said, you alter your workouts. You do what you can do, and and I just did what I could not to hurt myself. But it, it's when you push yourself like that to any extremes, but like you said, you, it really does catch up with you. Yep, and that fifteen pounds, nobody else might really notice it, but you sure and hell do. Oh, abs- absolutely. <laughs> Yep. What got you, Ed, to? I'm always curious. So powerlifting, man, to me, is the coolest thing in the world because I, I didn't get into it. I was I lifted really heavy when I was younger, and it's one thing, too. Like, I want to talk about what you're doing now and kind of traveling and doing some stuff with, with mm-hmm. other people on instructing others because I think it's so important. But <clears throat> like for us, like for me growing up, it, it all kind of depended on who whoever my weightlifting coach was in high school, and he wasn't great. He wasn't yeah. horrible. He wasn't, but that was my only. We didn't have the internet, and it was kind of just dependent on luck and whatnot. But what for you got you into it? Because I'm fascinated by this stuff. Because you guys, man, in training with Nick and seeing guys, and I'm a strong guy, but like it not nowhere near it, the, the the level that like you guys, what you guys put yourselves through. I I don't like the mindset of a powerlifter to me. It is like I mean, you got to be fearless to step under a thousand pounds. Well, you, you didn't. You you, you, ne- you never you never specialized in it, so it's you just didn't bring yourself up to that level because yeah. you didn't specialize in it. You had other things that you wanted to do athletically. That's fucking yeah. great. You still love it. Yep. But see, I, I started off bodybuilding like everyone else. I watched Arnold on TV in Pumping Iron when it first came out. Yeah. And I was like, oh my god! So I bought Arnold's book right away. Yep. And I tried to be Arnold. Then I met him at a Sears department store when I was a little kid. And my head was in his chest. And I looked up and I was like, oh, shit, I can't be Arnold. So I tried to be Franco Colombo because <laughs> he was a short little strong bodybuilder. <laughs> so then I bought his book. I went my first bodybuilding contest. He had, he had all these poses in the back, and that was my posing routine. I did every pose, <laughs> every pose he did from, from the back of his book. And... uh then I saw Kaz on TV lift and I was like, wait a second, you could be that big, that strong. There's weight classes. I don't have to weigh, wear those skimpy things on stage and pose. <laughs> I think I'm going to try this. And right away, that was my thing. I just loved it right away. Like a duck to water. Boom. There's and no feeling with a euphoric never rush of lifting heavy weight and breaking personal record. It's to me, it's the, 
there's no feeling in the world like it. No, it's it's because it's 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 an individual thing, but at the and at the same time, it's only you against the weights. Yep. There's no one helping you except for you. So when you do it, you're like, yeah, yep. that's right. You know, people. A lot of people don't get that, and it's not their thing then. But you know, nowadays everything's changing. Everyone wants to squat, bench, and deadlift. Yeah. No, it, it is I, with social, social media and seeing everybody. I'm blown away by away by how strong there, how many strong people there are out there. I, it was something. How many? Like, there's women squatting 500 pounds out there, and I'm like, man, I got to step up my game. <laughs> actually, 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 over 600 now with, yeah. with with no extra equipment. It's insane. But it's yeah. like anything. It, to me, it, it, though, I that, mean, the, go ahead. Sorry. The the. The 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 amount of athletes is so much more, and more people the way they're built are specializing in powerlifting where try where they don't try to do anything else and quit, so they're staying there. It's like you know, uh, basketball players or or track and field guys, some track guys or or uh, baseball or, or whatever. That's what they're good at right away, so they don't get to experience the powerlifting part. And same with powerlifters, but usually if, if you can maintain your athleticism, yeah. you can powerlift for a lot, lot longer period of time. You'll be way more injury free. And that's what I tried to do. I tried to maintain some athleticism and make every single part of my body strong. So wherever you hit, there was a chunk of strong muscle, like a suit of armor. Yeah. And that worked for a really long time. I lasted a long time. I competed for 28 straight years. Which is, I mean, that's just absolutely, just so unbelievable to me to be able to. And which, me, like that shows just your knowledge of it. And like Nick too, like Nick Best, and he that he showed me like some different things, like in doing the Zercher squats and different things to for my core. That for me, and with wrestling, that I'll be able to apply that I wasn't doing. And he just like a, just such a a wealth of knowledge of, like you said, building this armor around your body that. And, and like we see people in the, from talking to Andrew and these different people, like I was stretching all the time because that's what wrestling they they were yeah. that was the thing being pushed on. Like, and I remember I never used to stretch like crazy until I got into WWE on TV because I was always hurt all the time. And I did, mm -hmm. I got away from the powerlifting and started doing more machines because I I thought I was helping myself stay healthy by getting away from that because you're constantly in pain because you wrestling five nights yeah. a week. But at the biggest mistake I made was getting away from the, the core powerlifting lifts and the different things because it ultimately ended up started it, – it was hurting me further by not doing it. But it, it's a lot of wrestling. Yeah, you got – yeah. The, the, your skeletal system got weak. Yeah, 100%. And I need you need that to be yeah. and for the things I was doing, and it, you need to be you got to have a strong core, um, and, and the stretching. I remember the more I stretched, the more pain I was in, and I didn't associate it. Yeah, because I was creating instability. You're aggravating. Yeah, you're aggravating areas. Now it's more about uh, different little body movements and some light stretching, and that's all you need. The body movements kick everything off. Absolutely. Do you add? That's what yo. Know, that's what Andrew Locke. That's what Andrew Locke. That's what this this to, Dr. Tony Rogers, and that's what uh, the the back guy Stuart McGill all rely on. Yep. These tiny little movements that activate things and change things to put your body in the right spot. Yeah. If it's in the right spot, then healing can begin. If it's not, healing will not begin, no matter what you do. Andrew's helped me so much, and I, I will I will forever be grateful to that man. I reached out to him. I was desperate three years ago, a little over when, when I'd left, and I had all these wrestling appearances coming up, and they told me that I needed the five-disc fusion shoulder replacement, and I started my, my supplement company and spent a lot of money, and the window, like when you leave for wrestling, the money is great for a couple of years coming off TV, and I, I knew I had to take advantage of that, but my body was giving out to, on me, and I couldn't find any answers on what to do, and I'd ignored it for so long, and I couldn't ignore it anymore, and I somehow came across him and sent him a Facebook message, and man, I'll never forget, he wrote back this long reply, and he didn't have to get back to me, He and I'm sure he gets asked no. for information from you know everyone all the time, and I'm sure being a wrestler and 
in him knowing that did, probably didn't hurt. But man, he he's never he's helped me from that point on. And he got me through those couple of years with the stability things to help me just before my matches. And the the mm-hmm. exercises and things he's given me, he's never given me one piece of bad advice. And he, he, he gets back to me. I can't thank him enough. Like I wouldn't be where I am without him. Essentially, it, it, it's just it, yeah. You don't want so you don't want a you don't want a a doctor or therapist that thinks normal that thinks oh. old school. I want the guy that is like you know. Uh, the doctor from Back to the Future. I want that. I want that guy. Yeah. Because I know that he that he's gonna he's gonna find a way to fix me. And he's gonna look at me from a different way that everyone else is. And he's actually doing the same. He's lifting and he he's in the battlefield it, it, too. And he knows what we're going through. Yeah. I feel like that's why I was like, man, this guy, what a what a blessing to be able to come across to him and just I can't. It's just so incredible. Do have you two? I and I've tried so many different things, and I've, I've done my rehab program is pretty extensive. And of what I go through, it's mentally and with everything I'm doing. I get man. There's days, and I've been doing it for over three years, and but I've made such progress. Talk to me a bit about the rehab thing. Is that tough for you mentally going through that day in day out and, and doing the things? And I'm sure you take your off days, but for me, it, it sucks. It's, it's, sometimes. It, yeah. It can't. It, the, the suck part is getting off your ass to get down to do it. Yeah. After I start, I'm okay with Same. it because I start. Even though it, some of it may hurt a little bit, especially still. Um, right afterwards, I get an endorphin rush, and there's less pain in my body. Yeah. Then right, right there at that moment, um, even if it's midnight out, the uh, the stars shine brighter. The sun comes out, uh, God's light comes right upon me, and I hear the angels, and it gives me hope. That's how I feel. Yeah. I'm right away. Mentally, and there's because there's days, and I'll put it off sometimes, but I usually now I got a good routine where I, I do it before, and I got my gym at the house where I'm able to get everything done, thank God, and I mm-hmm. got all these different things. I'm able to knock it out, but it, it's a good, it takes a good chunk of time, but I feel that same way mentally. I know I'm, I'm doing something so good for myself and I know it comes down to the bottom line in accountability. I know if I don't do anything, I'm not going to get, this isn't going to fix itself. It, it, the only way. Yeah. You're not going to be able to do what you like in the gym. Yeah. Yep. 100%. I saw you too, man. In the, I was, I was so happy. The Dr. Bo at Hightower actually just shot me a message when I put up the, the post that you were yeah. on the show, man, what a, great human being and he's such a like, just so he's one of the he's one of the other great guys yeah. these guys do so much for people without even getting paid though yeah. their their payment is the fact that they love what they do and they like to see people get better he came to my and house. uh yeah. bo's one of those yep. yeah he's one of the great guys too he's phenomenal what he does he doesn't think like a normal person because he's definitely not normal <laughs> and and th- and these guys are so positive that they make you feel like, yes, I can get better. Let's hope, yeah. And right away, just by talking to him. He's the one that set me up with the guys from Bio Accelerator. Really? It was actually a post that you had put up on Instagram, and he had posted, you guys should help out Eddie Cohen. That's right. And right away, that. they DM'd me. I got them in touch yeah, with right Nick then they as well. Me. Yeah, because they're, they're incredible, man. Yeah. I saw you. And now I see everyone going to Bio Accelerator. Everyone. Jose Canseco just went down. I saw everyone's been going there. Jim McMahon. Yeah. Who's had a lot of, uh, I believe he has a lot of uh, CTE. Yes. Um, It could definitely do him a lot of good there. I saw he was just there, too. A lot of those fighters. Some football player, too. Yep. The football guys are going down. I was down there with this guy, Brandon Davidson, was down there with Kevin Nash, which a lot of the old school wrestlers, and I was talking to Steve Austin about this, and all those guys took a lot of chair shots. um, And all the NFL guys with all the head blows and all the fighters. What we're seeing now, though, is is with, with the CTE, is once that starts setting in, and it sets in at different stages for everybody, But I know, and from talking to Kevin Nash, and that guy's a very, very quick-witted, very, very intelligent man. And in in talking to different people, I could see the concern because once it starts setting in, it's really, it's a fast process, and it's a scary thing. And to see what they've been able to do, and like with that Matt Hughes, and actually start giving them a better quality of your life. Not to say that you're ever going to get back to 100%, 
But if you could provide uh, some a better quality just of just give me ninety. Yeah, <laughs> we don't need a hundred. Just yeah, just well, like, yeah. And and what what I did notice that that Kevin mentioned too was your uh, your the, the clarity of your your thoughts and stuff yes. are even better. All that brain fog gets gone. My vision. You know, I, I knew Kevin back in the day. I I, really? I used to uh, hang out with this. Yeah, I used to hang out with the Steiner brothers. Luger and Sting, and we'd all go out to dinner when they came into town, and that's when Kevin had first started. No back shit. Back in the uh, the Atlanta days. Yeah. That's yeah. Everyone was down there in Atlanta. That was the, that was one of the hubs down. Everyone that was where a lot of the guys lived. Yeah. I didn't know yep. that. That's so. Have you been a pro wrestling yeah. fan or been around it your whole life, pretty much? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I mean, back in the old days. Uh, Dick the Bruiser and Moose Cholak and all these guys were from Chicago area. Yeah. I had no and idea. And that's where a lot of it started on TV. What a small world, man. Go ahead. Do you, do you still watch it? Today, is. It, it's very... Because a lot of people... Yeah, so w- once in a while I, I, I turn it on. I just like to see... Um, I like the fact that uh, everyone moves and they're athletic and... Yeah. They're violent, and they're and and, it, and and it's it's not like some of the old days where you could see things on TV that didn't make sense on how the guy would fall and stuff like that. Yeah. I think it's it's it, it, it's morphed into a little bit more on how Japan Japan used to be, where they Absolutely. used to hit a lot more and be a lot more athletic, a faster pace match. The wrestlers are yeah still WWE still has a lot of big guys. Over there, but some of the other there's a lot of smaller wrestlers now too, which does create it's good it it, it it gives you variety on the product, which I think you always need. Yeah. But those old school matches were a lot. What it was more, it was a different style back then. It was more, um, and, and again, drug testing played a big part in that as well. And that that era was just a different era. But the mm-hmm. guys, the wrestlers, were just yeah. larger. They didn't do. Um, the the moves and everything have escalated uh, significantly from. But they 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 did they didn't have to do them. They didn't know, they were larger they, than life. No, they 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 set whatever moves like like with our training when we went to pain free movements, they shifted it to do what moves can I do that are going to look really fucking cool yep. for TV and the audience I'm playing to, and then they would work on that. And they and were boom, so that's how you too, got yeah. superstars. Absolutely. And I mean, because you're, you're not going to say, like, you're not going to say that Hulk Hogan had all the best moves. And he didn't but he had the to. personality. He knew how to, and he he knew how to work in Hulk Hogan. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, he worked, he, he worked the stuff that he knew how to work and his personality. And, and that, I mean, I remember, like, you know, the old Road Warriors. Yep. I love them. It, yeah. You watch. I, I, I used to talk to those guys all the time, too. Man, I, anima, the uh, animal. I've, I've talked to him quite a bit when I was in WWE when he would when he would be around, and it yeah. was always it was always cool, man. I, I always very respectful and thankful of all the wrestlers that came before us because it's the everything evolves, and, and they are you know the, watching those guys and growing up with them were a big reason why I got into it. So, it's, oh, definitely. Here's a good story for you. We had our our, uh, our national championship in powerlifting in Minnesota one time. And the guy putting them on um, was supposed to get all these new weights, but he didn't. He took them all from Animal and Hawk's gym. And I ended up bombing in the deadlift after a squat and bench. And I opened up at like 850 in the deadlift. And Animal and Hawk came in there. And Animal, Joe, he comes up to me and he goes, Eddie, you know those 100-pound plates you got four on each side? He goes, some of them, those weigh, weigh 103 and 104, maybe even more. So you should probably check the weights, but I had already bombed out. So that 850 as an Oprah was probably like you know, 885 or something. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, but we didn't know that till after the fact. Oh, those guys yeah. were a whole other level. Uh, that was it just uh, uh, looking the part. The physical wise, physicality, yeah. and, and man, uh, intensity. You no, know, and even, 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 even their old manager, uh, Precious Paul Ellerling. Yep. He used to do some powerlifting back in the day. I didn't know that, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rick Flair went in a powerlifting contest before. I, we were in uh, uh, over near O'Hare Airport, one of the, uh, uh, you know, one of the bars afterwards at the hotel, and Rick comes by me and he goes, Eddie. 1670 total, 1972. Woo! 
And yeah. That I know for a fact that just the, the woo confirms that that happened. <laughs> yeah. And and that was, you know, way back in, you know, when he was he was like over 300 pounds at one time, mm-hmm. so he was really really heavy. heavy yeah. But yeah, a lot of those the, the old Minnesota guys were uh, really, really strong. That was a big hub for lifting, period. Any type of lifting. That's where Brock they were. They were all monsters back then. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I met him in Louisiana when he first uh, got on the scene and got really popular, and he was nice as could be. I was, I was amazed because on TV, of course, he looked so much bigger. Yeah. And I, then I saw him in person. He was so nice, but his traps were, like, up to his ears. Yeah. It was, it was pretty good. That to I, me, when I, I was a I kid, like, traps really were like, always the one thing I thought. I remember Psycho yeah. Sid Vicious, and I go, and that was always. I do traps twice yeah. a week. I go, if you have big traps in wrestling, you're going to get over to a certain degree because people. It's just not everyone yeah. has them. Yep, <clears throat> Scotty Steiner is the one that broke his uh, leg, broke Sid's leg in the ring. Yeah, that was when he jumped off the turnbuckle there. That what a horror. That, yep. Yeah. Man. That to yeah, me, Scotty described that to me before. He said it made him sick. Actually, made him sick. I I've watched that and having my ankle injury. I broke my ankle at 28 and spiral broke my leg up wrestling on it for another like minute or two. But Sid jumped mm-hmm. off the, the the second rope, I believe, and his leg just snapped. It, it was yeah. It's probably the most horrific pro wrestling it, injury I think that's on film, especially when you've when you've had an injury when you've had a, a broken something or yep. snap, like if, if you look at my squat, if you Google or go to YouTube and go Ed Cohen injury, and you'll see my patellar tendon snapping during a squat. That's what you I wanted hear to talk snap. to you about that. Cause that's what I was earlier to me. And with you guys, you guys are such special human beings. I feel like, because that, like you said, in the accountability, it's one hundred percent on you. There's all these things that make it so great, but to actually get under a bar like that and squatting to me is always the because that that weight on you is a whole other feeling. And, and me going around Nick and Nick yeah. got me up to five fifty, which I haven't done in forever. And I didn't. I was doubting myself because I was scared because of my back, but it was the greatest feeling in the world. But it, I can't even imagine having double that weight or nearly double that weight. That what what for you? What mindset do you have to go in? Because like in my buddy Brandon Allen out here in Vegas, he just tore his quad off. He's yeah, I know Brandon, and such a nice guy. But like the 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 shit you guys go through to put yourself in, and to do these feats of strength, like what's your mindset going in on that when you're gonna have a thousand pounds on your back? Like what do you have to do to get the, ready for that? The, Almost the same as it was when I squatted 500 for the first time. Really? You've trained all along getting used to this, conditioning yourself, getting bigger, faster, stronger, all the way up, that when you're up there, if as long as training has gone well, my positive, positive attitude is just take this sucker off, set up perfectly how you always do. Now you're ready to squat. Just go down and come up. Because you it wasn't, it wasn't really any different. Yeah, it wasn't any different because I've been doing it for so long and I've trained at, from such a young age up to that point that I, I built this machine. I, I made this engine bigger and stronger the whole time so it could perform. So it, it wasn't, it was just try to make everything perfect. You almost have to calm yourself down on the outside, but on the inside, hold it in and make sure that you're ready to be extremely violent with this weight. And preparation creates confidence, and that the, so there's just no doubt going in. What do you think yeah. will set you apart from everyone? I mean, you're considered the greatest of all time by so many. And like, what do you think? Made I think you my mental abilities, my men, my mental abilities, my approach to powerlifting. When I started a training cycle, I knew every set, rep, weight on every single exercise I did for 10 to 14 weeks really, and I would never miss because I would go back and write it down again, then go back and write it down again, then go back and write it down again until I got everything right where I knew every week would build upon the next. I think they call that like auto regulation yeah. hours, something you got to pay someone, you got to pay someone 50 bucks for saying it. <laughs> and you know, it's like, and so I, I it, that's what I think it, it was. And I, I recognize what exercises, helped my weak point. So every off season, instead of doing a regular power squat, 
um, front squats didn't work for me. Leg presses didn't work that well for me. So I would go back to a high bar pant squat because my quads were weaker than my my hips and my back. Yep. And that would change that. I would work the shit out of those. Uh, then I would do deficit deadlifts uh, with no belt or stiff leg deficit deadlifts with no belt for a whole training cycle. I would change my bench grip and I would bench with my feet up in the air. I would do little things like that to change it, but it would transfer over enough to where when I went back to my regular style lifting, it would just take off. And it worked. Yep. Clearly. So I'm so like, yeah, Albert, executing on those goals. I think it's great advice, and that's what you did to a T. Yeah, it, had to, it has to be a really well-thought-out routine where you let your ego go. Yeah. So every year, if, let's say I did four cycles a year, and every year I got better, not just at the lifting part, but the mental part, the technique part, then all of a sudden all these muscle groups are all getting stronger together. So at the end of, let's say, your first three or five years, which is a real, real quick, um, what do you got? You got this gigantic strong package of strength yeah. that wherever you hit, there, it, it's not going to it's not going to break down, and that's the reason why I lasted so long. Albert Einstein said, "There's genius in simplicity." So you can look at a routine and think it's simple, but now try to do all that stuff and put it together yep. to last. That's the hard part. Absolutely, and, and cons- being consistent with it time and time again. Have you found to uh, uh, consistency it, is the best? Yeah, it's what it's the, it's. The work ethic has to be there, but that the consistency you got to be able to maintain that in, in through thick and thin, and it, it's something a lot of people can't do. And it's have you found because even if you don't want to go in the gym, you'll still be consistent and going anyways. Yep, you got to. Have you found too? And like for me, and like I and like I love pro wrestling, and I went all in on it, and I became obsessed with it, and I I, I thought about it night and day, and I was always trying to think of how what I can do to help my performance and then when I walked away from it it was tough for me because I didn't want to leave in my prime and obviously still want to continue to do it now just on a little bit different schedule once I'm able to but Mm -hmm. the taking that work ethic and that mentality that you had like I had in wrestling but that you had in in powerlifting was it difficult for you to apply that in other areas of life outside of that because you weren't doing what you loved anymore because for me, that was a challenge then to yeah, work I, I, for me. I, there, there's, there's no way that I could apply that much energy that I did in powerlifting and anything else. It, 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 it'll, never be, it'll never be the same. All I got to do is just, if I could stay busy, yeah. then that's more than enough. Then, then, then I, have, you know, I have that little goal in front of me, and I can set that goal. It'll never be like powerlifting. Nothing will be, ever be like powerlifting because – I was I was the best yeah. for so long, and that's what I lived for. You loved it from you know physical and and, and mental. Yep. So now you're taking out the physical part, which is our drug. You can't replace that. That's what and you're going. Me. Yeah, you can't replace that. So we just try to be a little bit of who I, who we were. Yep. Be happy with our strength level. Be happy with our health level. Look in the mirror and say, you know what? I look pretty damn good. Yeah. No, there, there's your part of mental attitude. You were able to switch instead of being a, a bitter old ass and wanting to go back in the ring like a 60 year old boxer. You know, it's not going to work. You're just going to be pathetic. Yeah. That's too, you know, the, the correlation I was talking, I've had other guys on here and talking to them, uh, like Robert Oberst and having Nick on here. Yeah. Uh, and, and Brian Carroll. The, for me, I think, too, what draws me in loving powerlifting is the adrenaline, and that's the correlation to pro wrestling, because that's uh, the thing I love most about pro wrestling is that adrenaline rush. Do you two, like, that's the thing you can't replace, like getting ready for a big lift or like going out there in front of thousands of people, and that's the one thing that, to me, like I can't replace right now, and it sucks, because it, it, there's no, no feeling in the world like it. But to me, that's always been the connection for me. To I've always associated that with powerlifting, because that feeling is very similar to me of the rush that I would get with that. But mm-hmm. you, you can't replace it once it's and you gotta you just gotta find other things, like you said, to keep you busy. Yeah, you gotta try to find a way to be happy yeah. with who you are now. Some of it will always suck, and eh, that's okay. You get used to it. And then, then there'll come a point where you can look, look back and say, no, nah, I'm pretty happy with what I did. I'm fine with where I'm at, yeah. but I'm going to be the best 
SOB I am right now. And that's what you're doing now. And you're, you're helping it. a lot of people now. You're traveling a bit, right? Doing some seminars? Yeah, I was just in New Jersey. I, I, I've i gone all over the world with uh, Stan Efferding, who you know. Yes, yes. And uh, I, I used to do a, a bunch of things with Poliquin. I just got back from New Jersey. Then, uh, like this weekend, I'll be in Medellin. Then two weeks later, at the end of February, I'll be in Belgium for just a weekend. Then I got the Arnold Classic here. Then I, the week later, I go to the Arnold Classic, Classic Australia. And then when I get back, I have something, in, a couple in North Dakota. And so it keeps, then, then we're having the uh, first annual Eddie Cohn Powerlifting Classic in Omaha, Nebraska, at a friend of mine's gym, which will be fun. Um, so it, it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. No, you're, you're and my, my schedule is what I want to make it. Yep. Yeah. My schedule is what I want to, what I want to make it. Yeah. That's what too, does it give I'm you to make myself helping happy. other people? Cause it's, sometimes you see like people that are like, this happens a lot in like pro wrestling where like the biggest stars in pro wrestling, you know, Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold, Steve Austin, the rock, and just naming some modern guys. They're not uh, as involved in pro wrestling. They've moved on. They go do other things. Um, sometimes people have a hard time that really reach that, that elite level. I feel like of coaching or helping others. That's really to me so cool that you're able to do that and give back and help people and, and share what you've learned in your mindset. Does that give you a great joy being able to do that? Oh, there's a good rush to it. Yeah. Because all of a sudden this person who couldn't do it, when you watch them, they do it right. And you watch their eyes light up yep. and you say, well, you could definitely put on some more weight right now. Yeah. And all of a sudden they do and they hit that one easy. And then you see them, you see their faces. They got, they got that hope in their eyes where, Hey, I know I can get better. I didn't stop powerlifting until I knew I couldn't get any better with the way I did things. It wasn't, it, it wasn't I got to beat this guy or I got to beat that guy or I got to set this record. I mean, there's always little goals, but at the, the, the real th reason was I knew I could keep getting better. And that's what kept me going. No, and I think that's so important to share that. And like, I, like training me being around, like Nick, I'll forever be grateful for Nick Best. And, and hopefully when I'm, have my schedule here a little bit more time we can my shoulder a little better we can get some more workouts with him it's like just him one session with him he was able to correct some mistakes that i had picked up from everything and it like it, it's such a great feeling uh and i too i think it's too letting your ego go and being able to be around people that are just that have excelled in what you want to do it's such a cool experience and to be i think that's great that you're doing that and getting to share and give back and help people because weightlifting is the one thing that and now with with social media, there's a lot of people giving advice, and you got to really know who you're getting your advice from. But yeah, there's so much crap yeah, out there. You got to really, weightlifting is like such a thing. You no other thing do you like go and just start trying to figure it out on your own. Like no sport or anything else. But like weightlifting was the one thing where people just like, oh, I can just go figure this out. It, it's in, no, it could cause you injuries that can prevent you from a, a quality of life for the rest of your life if you're not careful. Oh, I see. So, yes. So many people that try to lift bigger weight that they shouldn't. It, it, it makes you cringe. So, so it's, it's yes, great. It, 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 I'm like, oh, no. Uh, squat and deadlift form. Yeah. De deadlift form usually is really, really horrible. Um, squat form, I can actually fix sometimes easier than deadlift form. Really? Because at least you can go down. Yeah, I can make them slow down. If I can make them slow down on the way down in little stages, I can correct it. So then they come up perfectly. How you go down is how you come up. Yeah. Where in the deadlift is you only come up. Yep. So teaching them how, how to get this tight, lock your, lock your lats in and pull them down and get, get your sternum up and lock that in. Um, it's yeah. Use your hips and keep pushing with your legs. It like all of a sudden, um, if it, it just takes more time. No, I agree. Are you going to be, I would, man, are you going to be in Vegas anytime? Um, Probably by the su in the summer, okay. I'll come out there. Because I know Andrew's planning. We'll fix your squat. Here. That's what my my Nick has worked with me on my squat and like said everything looked good. My deadlift is one thing. I I still am not uh, convinced. I'm I, I feel like there's some missing pieces in it, even though and we've we've worked on. Well, it. the next time you do deadlifts, t take a video from the front and then a little bit from the side. Okay. A little bit front, like a front front side view. Okay. And I'll be able to fix it easy. Because it's Nick helped me a lot on a couple things, but I still feel like there's a little because it, it's, uh, I, man, I love that stuff and it, it helps me so much now. It, 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 
mentally too going through everything to be able to do this again i'm very blessed so it's uh i just to met- feel to feel strong is something that everybody should be able to experience yeah there's no feeling in the world like it there's nothing wrong with being strong <laughs> Oh man! Someone will steal that and put it on a shirt now. <laughs> That's but you know, someone else told me, "Hey, did you ever see someone sitting on the bench for being too strong?" <laughs> no, man. It helps you in every aspect of life. I tell people, like it, it's. I always tell people too, like guys, you know, like Mark Henry, and I've wrestled him many times, and that is one guy. You know, I don't care how skilled you are in MMA or anything. Mark, like if Mark Henry gets mad at you, he can rip your your head right off. Like, yeah, you're in trouble. Yeah, and that I yeah. always like. Hey, when he was a, go ahead. When he was a teenager, he took the bus all the way from Texas down to Florida to go to a power meet, and I'm and I'm talking. He was a teenager. He had like a. Uh, uh, a buzz like a, a really like a flat top almost, but real high like yeah. a, like a cameo the old the old yeah. group, and and Mark did like a seven a high seven squat or something a mid seven deadlift and uh, I don't know four seventies four sixty bench or something, and uh, I helped him a little bit there really and I have a picture of him holding holding me up in the air he's like seventeen years old and. I, it was Hollywood, Florida, I believe. That, yeah, he came to. And I look like a little baby as he's swinging me in his arms. I still got that picture somewhere. I remember Mark yeah. and when I had to start wrestling him all the time. And I'd been around him. But I remember my first when I first got called up to WWE and we were in the locker room. And I remember just seeing him and his calves and his legs and his back. And he wasn't even lifting hardly at this point. And he was... Yeah. His... the. Like in Mark, his body fat might have been a little higher, but he was a rock. Like this guy, I go, man. The structure was big. Like a dinosaur. I go, the life, I go, that is just a human being that was built just just for sheer power. And, and man. Yeah. What a, he actually uh, could block out the sun. Definitely. Yeah. The guy, man, incredible. The things, and I, I tell you, Mark, I. I have a lot of respect for him because of having and succeeding at the highest level in with that and then going into wrestling, which is, I, to me, in the, the pain that puts on your body at the WWE schedule. And he got injured early on up there, but then he figured it out and he got and he stayed up. Man, he had a hell of a career in two different things. In yeah, it was, his, uh, it was his foot, wasn't it? He had multiple things. I can't – because I know – well, his shoulders yeah, were shot. I know he had a really long – a long-lasting foot injury. Yeah, because I know that was one of them. Some weight finally a little bit too, because that's the other thing up there. The heavier, heavier you are, it really takes, especially the style, the way it is, and not. And he had his own style, but it just at that five days a week, man, the body and the traveling, it's not meant for. for <laughs> oh that. God, I could not imagine the the road would. It, 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 it takes a, a special person to be able to do it. that yeah. and still be able to perform. Yeah. You love it. That's because you're you're a different kind of crazy that I'm not, and I might be a different kind of crazy that you're not. Yeah, but we're both fucking crazy. Yep. <laughs> At the end of the day, you're both crazy. <laughs> oh, man. yeah. But we, we made it work. Yes, man. No, and I, I do. Everyone I have on here, I, and I'm very appreciative of you coming on and, and, and talking with me. I have nothing Thanks. but respect for you. Well, wait. Uh, t- 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 tell me about uh, a little bit more about your uh, your line. Feed me more. <laughs> oh, the catchphrase Tell me about your nutrition line. Oh, the nutrition line. Yeah, yeah. No, I want to hear about the. I want to hear about the nutrition line itself. Yeah. So for me, so I'm. Really I don't know a lot up. about it. I, I see you selling it. Oh man, I, I I'm I'm not selling. I'm persuading because I believe in it so strongly. Ed, the mm-hmm. I when I was younger. So my thing is, and I didn't talk. We didn't talk about this on here on like and steroids and drugs and like I'm. I, I never thought getting into wrestling that it was something that I would ever do when I was younger. And mm-hmm. and I talk about it and, and I be judgment free on what people do. Uh, I have my hero, Triple H, one of the guys I grew up really, really liking, came into Gold's Gym when I was 19 years old with Kevin Nash, actually, and one of my other guys, my favorites, him and Razor Ramon. And they were sitting at the juice bar mm-hmm. during the Mr. Olympia. 
and, and talking about uh, and Hunter was talking about his steroid cycle, and right then and there was when wait, I wait how how erotic. He's talking about that at the juice <laughs> at the bar. Juice bar. <laughs> and nineteen year old little Ryback at, at, at Gold's Gym, it's about two hundred and thirty five, two hundred and forty pounds, never touched anything. Jay Cutler used to come in there and tell me I needed to be a bodybuilder all the time. And I told Jag, I'm gonna be a pro wrestler and but I see that from Hunter and them and it kinda opened up my mind, well that's what I gotta do to to make it and to be a pro wrestler and uh, and I did very mildly for about four years, and it got me. I got hired by WWE, and, and I did it. But when I was, I was taking, I've always believed in investing in my body, especially for pro wrestling and looking the part. So I, and we, when you're in developmental, you know, you're making 500, 750 bucks a week at that time. Not a ton of money, and you're yeah. living week to week pretty much. And with the amount of food that I would have to yeah. eat, my, my I was on a, I was on a budget, but I always bought my supplements and tried different things and my protein powders. And I and I because I I knew that if I always took care of myself and looked the part, I would feel better. It would give me. You, I wanted to be a five tool player. The more tools you had, the more bases you had covered for pro wrestling, the better yeah. of a chance you had to, for Vince to like you and to push you and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I started suffering some side effects from consuming the aspartame and sucralose, the artificial sweeteners. I was consuming so much of this stuff, which is in like 99% of the supplements all use it. It tastes great. Yes. It, 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 it tastes awesome, and I'll never argue that. Um, and to say if you have a Diet Coke here and there, probably not the end of the world. For me, though, it was in everything. I was drinking diet sodas, my energy drinks, my pre-workouts, my protein powders, my RTD protein shakes. I started getting, I would wake up and like feel like a zombie. I couldn't, no matter how much sleep I got, and I never had that happening before. My so it was a big uh, accumulative effect on your body over time. It yes. built up and it just started short-circuiting your body. Absolutely. And... For me, I started looking around and seeing all these supplement companies and different things, and, and I just stuck to the basics. And But I go, man, all these companies are just making money. And for me, I feel like health and fitness needs to go together. And I think I'm a big believer in that when you choose to sell to other human beings, you have a responsibility to at least, well, the best of your knowledge, sell them something that's good and healthy for them that's going to benefit them. Unfortunately, that's not the case in the well, world with you, a lot of business, especially no, the supplement industry. But you, you have it, it, you, you you have a conscience. Yes, and, and you know if you sell shit, it's going to come back on you, and yeah. you're going to end up feeling like shit because everyone's going to know you're shit. Yes, and that was and for me and too Ed, I actually when I was younger, right before I the, that thing with Hunter, I actually my first encounter was. Uh, and I've been on, and I'm very honest about it, I've been on TRT since I was 28. I got sold Andro mm -hmm. at a GNC. Again, my fault to take accountability of everything, but they pushed it on me in, during that whole Mark McGuire thing that this is what, you know, it is a safe. And that's when I, I mm -hmm. to me, and things like that, and that's not going on necessarily as much now. Granted, there are things, and, but a lot of that stuff is more, as far as being in brick and mortars, it's a lot more restricted. But I never... I wanted to start creating my own supplements with stevia and monk fruit, no artificial sweeteners. But I started creating my own formulas in my 20s because I got sick of all the shit that I was being sold. And so for me, it was like I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I read all the time. But I lived through experience of trying things. And my mom, I became very fascinated with herbs when I was a kid because my mom was really into that stuff. So I had exposure to it. So for me, I started making my own supplements at a younger, in my 20s. In, in sweetening this stuff and cool and and I started creating my own formulas and I was bringing them on the road with me and so I just all of a sudden with WWE with everything that kind of happened in my career and no matter how cool of a job it was at the end of the day my success relied on them allowing me to win and that was a really tough thing for me to accept when at different times when I had a lot of momentum and I started and I'm very thankful for it though because what it did was it pushed me to start reading about business and entrepreneurship and doing these other things and so at some point in my mid wwe career i go man i want to do this feed me more nutrition and because this stuff works for me and i and i i like i'm i creating my own sleep aid that i would use so i didn't have to take nyquil and benadryl to go to sleep every night this stuff was created out of a oh, necessity God, yeah. of me it wanted because i i want to take care of myself and i want to perform at the highest level 
but I'd also, I don't want to do anything to hurt myself. And so I'm, cause I'm very health conscious. So it all came from that. And then creating these products, we started with three. When I left WWE, I invested my own money Ed, because I said, I go, I don't want to lose a bank's money. I don't want to take a loan. I go, this is all on me. I believe in this so strongly because it's helped me so much that, and I just dove, man, I dove head first. And, and it started off really hot the first year because of all the wrestling fans. And then I blew, I got, with marketers, I got blew a lot of money that went really bad the second year. And that's what though taught me a lesson on social media where I had to get really active on social media and I had to start learning even yeah. more about business. So like net where we you couldn't rely problem. on someone else. Yeah. And where in I morning tonight is all I do is work on this stuff. And we became profitable at that two year mark. And now I'm, I just sent the company off to fulfillment. They're doing the inventory. They take over next week. We're spending, you know, it, my, my marketing is, I won't say the exact number, but it's way more than I ever thought I would be doing this early on. And it's all more and more people are using the supplements now. And it's the reviews are nearly five stars every time on all of it, which makes me feel so good that people are actually that it, because as you know, in the, this industry, there's a lot of bullshit. And I always, I, I put myself out there, man, like, no, this stuff was created for me. And like, and this is, and now I'm making it available to you. And I'm constant, I don't know everything. So we're looking at things and like, I'm going to do a plant-based protein. Cause I know, and I've been doing a lot of plant-based stuff and just to give people options and to give them just, yeah, it's a, it's a, it, it, plus business wise, it's a big market. Absolutely. And, and I just think too, and I've read in different things. It's like, I don't even like calling it selling because I believe in it so much. Like I really believe it can help people because mm -hmm. it's helped me so much and I, I love it. So it, it doesn't like, I, that's why I'm constantly, man, I, I'm just thinking about this stuff night and day. I got, we got like 15 different formulas I got to do. I got all written down and it's just, as we continue to grow and it, it's 2020 is going to be a good year with all this now that, cause I've done all the manual work for three years, shipping orders, doing inventory, mm -hmm. Carrying, I got shelves. I had yeah. to set up a whole thing at the house because of my dog and having to take care of her. I couldn't leave for two years, like for my wrestling. And so I had to figure out a way to make this work quicker than, you know, I probably even would have if I was still getting wrestling money and appearances and stuff. But I tell you, it, it's been, I'm very grateful for all of it. And it, it's, like you said, it, it takes time to, of people seeing stuff. And for, and it's just, yeah, but you're yeah. the, you're, 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 you're also, you're also the one that did it both out of necessity when you didn't have money, when you used to make your own stuff when you were younger to developing your line saying, well, you know what, this could be a really good business and I can help people. Yes. So if it's, if it's done at the right re for the right reasons, um, nothing ever really comes back on you. All you got to do is just, uh, hype it the right way. And then those people won't buy once they'll come back twice. If it's a great product. That was my thing too. And that's Ed. what you're doing. So, so yeah, many companies definitely. will get you for that one time sale and then you just go, Oh, they got me. I never want anyone like that that would kill me if somebody said that. And, and you go, granted, you know, Stevia, maybe taste wise, somebody doesn't like the taste of something. That but I am constantly looking. We've improved that tremendously and but my I really it, it's it's such a good feeling when you meet somebody and they've lost a hundred pounds and they're taking your supplements. Or they, oh. they, it, 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 there's no yeah, if, better feeling. If you get success if you get people, when they write you, they tell you how good they feel, whether they lost weight, they gained weight, yep. their performance is better, they sleep better, all that stuff, their, their cholesterol is down, their blood pressure is down, they don't hold enough water, whatever it may be, that is what keeps you going and know, makes you know you did the right thing. Absolutely. And it's, there's no feeling like it. So to me, it, it's been... Uh, it's crazy how it's all come together because, like I said, doing everything and, and even in doing this show, it, it, it all takes a lot of work and it all falls on me. But it, I, it's getting up early and going to work every day. But I, sometimes I don't feel like I'm working because it's all stuff I enjoy doing. Yeah. And it's such a cool thing. And I, I'm very blessed with all of this. And it's been, I, I'm looking forward now that I don't have to, I have a team working for me now. I can now pour, I could double my marketing, triple my marketing, and I don't mm -hmm. have to worry about getting, being able to fulfill all the orders by myself and along with everything else. So it's, it's exciting times here. I, I've, I, I've worked hard for this, so it, it makes me happy people are enjoying it. And, um, but it's like anything, you, that's why I was asking you about like applying yourself outside of, I've had to learn to like take that energy I had in wrestling and really become obsessed with this stuff in a, in a healthy way. To, to, and, and, and you realize that you liked it. Yes. 
Oh, I love the business. There's no better feeling like working for and yourself. That, and that, no, but you like then you like yourself. Yeah, it makes me happy, and that's what. And at this point too, you yep. know, you always hear too. With again, I think life is all about you know balance, and, and it, I've seen a lot of ultra successful wealthy people um, that I feel and they lack happiness and, and, and love, and they become obsessive with with a wanting to just get ultra rich and, and a number, and and mm-hmm. I've never. To me, that's very scary. And they, they don't have friends. Yeah, no friends. None of them have friends either. Life, and I think they have important. business acquaintances. Yeah, or people that kiss their ass because they're wealthy. Yep, and they're and they're some of the unhappiest people in the world. And I go, man, is, if there's a way to do this, and I think, and I've worked, I've tied people on here. I'm constantly reading about trying to improve my my myself and my mentality and letting my ego go and, and like I really and, and trying to open myself up to like I want to experience it all and, and because obviously you know financial freedom and where we're going that's a very uh, real thing that sure. I feel t- it, it's important but you know, I don't I never want to sacrifice it for you know love and happiness which I think is the end goal at the end of the day. You'll end up being unhappy. Yep. One hundred percent. So it, man, it's been. I, I've really, I've enjoyed this process of, of seeing it grow. And started with three supplements. We are up to eight now with multiple flavors, and we got more coming. So I can't thank people enough for for giving it a shot and, and leaving the good reviews and all that. Well, then you know there's 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 more to come for you then. Absolutely. No, it's. Ed, everyone I have on here, I'm I always asking, I'm really curious. I, this is my favorite part of the show, actually, is one piece of advice that uh, if you can leave. And some people, like Robert Oberst, wanted to, and I wasn't going to argue with him because he's much larger than me. Uh, but one piece of advice mm-hmm. that's helped you the most in your life for the listeners, what would you narrow that down to? Uh, I took my time. Patience. Pretty simple. I took my time. Yeah. That's great advice. When 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 you take when you take your time, you start seeing things more clearly because everything slows down, and then you can identify the good and the bad, and get rid of the bad at an easier rate. If you if you go too fast, you don't see that, yep. you don't see it at all. So you can't identify it and change it because you're trying to go too fast. You end up being your own worst enemy. So many people's worst enemy is right in front of them in the mirror. Take your turn. Make it right. Boom. Now you got now you got your formula to get better. Great advice. That's simple. No. It's simple. It was simple to me. That is simple. And it, looking in the mirror and taking your time, man, that's no argument for me. That that is phenomenal advice. No, because then because then all kinds of things, everything else after that uh, starts to happen. You, a, a, after that, then you start being happy with yourself. You're honest with yourself. You 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 talk to people more. You read more and realize that you don't know everything because you're taking your time. Yeah. You allow all these other things to start getting in that are positive. You always hear to enjoy the and, journey it, and have fun in the moment. And because I think sometimes we get obsessed with the result and being married to the result. Yeah, if, if you if you, you well that, that that's because. People are looking, aren't looking at the long range uh, project. They're looking at it from a short range, yeah. and so there is no journey. That's great advice. There is no journey. No. And then what are you doing? You're just you're missing the best part. Sure, because look, if you don't take your time and make everything right, the journey is not an enjoyable journey because you fuck up the whole time. Yeah. Wow. I love it. Man, Ed, I can't thank cool. you enough with the uh, for coming on here with everyone. Oh no, thank you. This is for this show I, get to I tell talk everyone. To you, dude. This show for me has been like I tell people like it's something I want to do for the rest of my life, honestly. It's like a diary. Uh, I tell people like it's like for me learning too of having all these these great human beings on here, man. And and, and you are definitely one of them. So it's Thanks. Where hey, well, I get to talk to you. Thank you. You're cool as shit. I, I try, man. I like to laugh, Ed. That's what I, I tell people. Like, I, I have a comedian in me, I th- which I feel you do as well. That uh, I, laughing man makes makes shit a lot better. I make people laugh so much during the when I when I do workshops. It's it's freaking great. 
They don't expect it when you. Then I, I can feel get like through it's one. an anomaly for people to see a, a muscular person or a large person or someone that, that, that just capable of such feats of strength, and then they have a sense of humor too. It's a really powerful thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm the guy that does the little dry one-liners that they have to think about. Then they think about it, and all of a sudden you see them clapping. It's like Ed Cohen just ripped on me. Oh man, I love it. Where are you at on social media? And I know you're Ed, uh, Eddie Cohen on Instagram, right? Yeah. Is that the I have Facebook, on, but I mostly only do stuff on Instagram. Okay, very good. Yeah, Eddie Cohen on Instagram. Man, Ed, I can't think. Thank you very much for coming on. It's been a pleasure. No, I appreciate you. You're fantastic at what you're doing. Just, just keep doing what you're doing. And feed me more. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys, we'll be right back after these messages. Right, it's that time. We got Raj Geary with Wrestling Inc. with the Wrestling Report. How you doing today, Raj? Doing great. Uh, it's been one of those weeks where I woke up on Tuesday thinking it was Friday because so much had gone on. And so today is Friday and I'm just exhausted. But uh, how are you? I'm doing well. I- I've noticed, uh, I always know going into this if it's a busy week or not because you can kind of see what it seems like as this week has gone on. We had all the Royal Rumble stuff and, and all that, but it seems like there's it's, it's quite the... Uh, this is a good good week for Ryback TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, to say the least. I was trying to uh, narrow down the number of topics so we don't go for hours and hours here, and just just so much going on. So, uh, man, let's just jump right into it. Yes, that's, well, that's up to me, Raj, to be a professional and not talk for thirty minutes about each topic. Also, <laughs> <laughs> and realize that we are doing a show. Right. That, that's people, people do people not are... want in depth detail on on small things. And yeah, that's why they're tuning in, though, right? They, um, but uh, yeah, let's start with the big, the biggest news of the week. Uh, this, for a lot of people, I mean, in, in a lot, most ways, it's really one of the biggest stories of the year. Uh, WWE co-presidents George Barrios and Michelle Wilson have been let go. They're leaving the company. Uh, they were pretty much next in command from Vince McMahon and. The plan had been for once Vince eventually steps down, that they would be the ones taking over. Stephanie McMahon would kind of be the face of the company, but not really uh, have any power. Um, They would be the ones kind of running the company, and Triple H would kind of be in charge of creative. Obviously, that's all out the window um, now that they have left. Now, Vince McMahon commented on it. Uh, He said he he thanked them both. They both had been there for over 10 years. he said that he's grateful for all that was accomplished during their tenure, but the board and I decided a change was necessary as we have different views on how to best achieve our strategic priorities moving forward. We have a deep team of talented, experienced, and committed executives across the organization, and the board and I have great confidence in our collective abilities to create compelling content, engage our global fan base across platforms, increase revenues, and drive shareholder value. Now, Wall Street reacted. Uh, the stock plunged. It dropped from, it was around $61 uh, at close on Thursday. It opened at $45, so about 27 percent and uh yeah next week they're gonna wwe will be reporting its fourth quarter uh 2019 and full 2019 financial results so i mean the timing is not a coincidence uh a lot to dive into here ryback what say you that it's very interesting when i saw that and i will say and this is something with vince and he treats this it, it, it is a business We've seen it with past uh, people that have worked there for a long period of time. The guy, and I forget, the, forgive me, and I know him, used to talk to him all the time. Um, the guy that used to throw Stone Cold the beers. Um, then the name, the, the bell, is it the, 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 the bell keeper, the bell? Um, yeah. Mark Eaton. Mark Eaton. Sorry, Mark. Uh, big, stupid Ryback. The. Uh, but where he got, I remember where he just got released and like they escorted him out. And like, that's a guy that had been there for many many years Vince it, it we've it's a very weird thing like he will use people and you'll see this with big businesses they just say it, it this is what and the vibe I got when you're looking at him is when you're dealing with human lives and you 
there's a good way to do business and a bad way, but when you become absolutely obsessed only about increasing the actual number, the monetary value of the company and the number by any means necessary, it is a very, very bad thing. It's a very lonely world. Like that, that, it's a, that's a lonely family, I can guarantee you, because that, that is what's going on with that. These people, he used them to get to a certain level that he wanted, which we've seen. They're making more money than ever. In the, where wrestling's actually going down in popularity, but they don't care about that. They're just looking at the monetary value, and that's all that matters. How can we keep increasing this? And I don't know what's going on backstage, but clearly there is something. And whether they he has a change in in business in a, the business model to increase the revenue even further that they don't agree with could be something you know uh, morally that they don't think is 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 right and they have a different vision and where you'll see well okay you're gone and that that's a huge thing for that stock to get dropped that amount and now and what that's because shareholders do not like uncertainty and that's what's going on now now that's not to say that the quarterlies come out and they announce they're gonna they're being sold to fox or disney or whoever you know what i mean they, they may have a entirely there might be something more going on to this than, than meets the eye or it could be they came in way under on the numbers vince so you got to understand so if that's the case vince needs someone he could point the fingers at at that meeting that shareholders meeting and that's that's their way of covering their ass on that so yeah, I mean, we saw Eric Bischoff ousted last year after being there only for a few months. Um, it does seem like, and, and again, this is all this is just speculation on my part, but just from timing and everything, that Barrios and Michelle Wilson are going to be used as scapegoats for uh, what I would guess are going to be disappointing numbers coming up now. We've seen live events um, lose money for the first time ever the last couple of years with WWE, and now in February, there's they've cut down drastically on live events um obviously if they were doing well if they had picked up uh they wouldn't be doing that uh, and also the network this uh, past sunday's royal rumble and we'll talk more about that here in a second the interest was d way down yeah. according to google trends and um from last year obviously some of that had probably had to do with the kobe bryant news oh, yeah. But um, still, it was way down. That affects network numbers. And this is supposed to be the hot period where they're gaining network subscribers. Yeah. This is a culmination of what people were talking about for years. That, that it, it didn't happen for a long time. But we kept seeing these little things over the years where people are like, I, I know. And from conversations I've had with people, they're saying, it's going to catch up with them. It's going to catch up with them. It's going to catch up with them. And it seems as if now things are finally catching up to them. And... <clears throat> That is like I told you, and for the viewers, like the live events and stuff, it's, I'm happy that the live events have got cut down for the talent because they don't need to be out there. But rest assured, if those things were delivering and drawing money, they'd be out there every week. That's, yeah. So I'm, but I'm happy regardless because it's a, it's a cutback for the talent that don't need to be doing that to begin with. But interest is clearly down i feel in in the product overall and i said when you figure out that you just try to make as much money as possible because that's all that this is to vince is increasing that number by any means necessary at the end of the year <clears throat> it, it, it start it, it's, it's a scary thing man and it's you, they, sometimes you can get too big and i and i think if things vince he's getting older it, it's the world is changing heavily and he has all these people around him I, I I will not be shocked if they sell at sooner than rather than later. I really I mean it has to happen. If you think Hunter and Stephanie are going to run that place, you're at, you're out of your mind. There's no way. And that's why all these other, that place, they have so many people that work there that are that that keep that machine going. And Vince being the brainchild behind it, <clears throat> I, I think I just think there comes a point. He he simplified things that he, he he's got he's going to sell and maybe he's still involved. I don't know, but. The XFL shit coming up. It's like how there's just no way that you keep this going like it. So yeah. Um, so yeah, Barrios and Wilson have been there for a long time. Yeah. Uh, how much interaction does talent have with these other executives? Do you like? Uh, they were only promoted to co-presidents in 2018. Yeah. So that was before. Uh, I mean, that was after your time there. But did you ever see um, George Barrios while he was CFO? Michelle Wilson, she was still an, uh, you I, know high rank executive. Yeah, I'm sure I did meet them, but I, but I I can't tell you. There's so much going on when you're there, and a lot of people don't always. 
if they do introduce themselves, you don't know who they are. Like I, yeah. I don't keep up. Like especially when I was there, I didn't keep up with any. Like you don't. You're just too busy. You don't know who's who. Right. Unless you strike up a conversation and they tell you. And but I mean, I've met people and they tell me what they do, and it's in one ear out the other because you're thinking about your promo that you got to go do in your match, and like it's just right. you meet so many people when you're there. I, I couldn't. And I met a lot of them, but I, I couldn't tell you who did what, and I can't remember if I ever did uh, with all of that. And they, they bring people from TV, the, empl- the actual employees. They're at TVs all the time, and they, they're changing out. Those people change out so often as well. <clears throat> yeah. It, it, it's, there's something going on deeper than all of this. It, I think maybe even more than just bad quarterlies with that, even though that would be the sign of why you would – they need to point the finger at someone, but I'm curious to see what what comes out with this here in the next week or two. With all, yeah, this. yeah, it's just interesting that the two co-presidents and it, it seems like talent really never interacts with them or sees them. I mean, it's completely uh, separate. Yeah. Um, so well, those people are taken care of really well too. They're looking <laughs> oh, yeah. at all the benefits, and it, it's crazy the way that as they should when the wrestlers don't. It, it, it's an ass backwards whole uh, environment. So. Yeah, I mean, both of them in recent years have sold millions and millions and millions of dollars of stock. Um, Michelle Wilson, and George Barrios. I think just last year, uh, Wilson sold like eighty percent of her stock. So, I don't know if that she saw things coming or or what it was, but I'll tell uh, you, that's never a great. <clears throat> no, it's, it, if you're a business person and they're investing, but when you pull the majority of your money out of a stock, it's uh, not like you're just taking twenty, thirty percent out. In, in taking some profits along the way, you're pulling the majority of your your stock out. Uh, that's yeah. You might, you might know a thing or two that's going on down the road. Yeah. Uh, so WB stock in April of 2019 had hit 100 bucks. You know, right right at 100 bucks. Now it's at about 50. And next week we'll talk more about the uh, the earnings call because that should be. Um, you know, we'll see if it goes down further or um, or what happens. But we'll shorts see. like it when there's uncertainty and they hop on. That, that price is going to probably get driven down, or I would say a little more before next yeah. week. Yeah. Uh, a couple of big injuries uh, that happened at the Royal Rumble and uh, on Raw the following night. Samoa Joe, um, they did a spot during the tag team match where Samoa Joe did a dive to the outside. Landed awkwardly, kind of landed on his head. It, it looked nasty, yeah. and he was taken out of the match. Uh, but the, with the story of the match, it almost looked like that was done on purpose because Kevin Owens, then it was two-on-one, and then he ended up losing. But he didn't look so bad losing because he was fighting two guys. Turned out that was a legit injury. Uh, Samoa Joe, who just returned to action from a finger injury, uh, was injured. It's believed to be a concussion. Um, so with a concussion, you just never know. Once you're cleared, you're cleared. But sometimes it could take a while. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, uh, Samoa Joe back on the injured reserve. You know, back on IR. He's had a little bad luck on that end with that, and um, he's wrestled for a long time. That's the yeah. other thing. And then <clears throat> you know, and when you do, he's wrestled for Impact and the, all these other major promotions, and he he's worked his ass off from day one. He's had a very he's had a long career. And then you get to WWE and that schedule, man. Yeah. It really is a it's it's like I said, it's it's not an easy thing. So and that's just I think that again, it's just he's a very a big guy working that style of going a faster pace. It 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 that style is so much danger for the heavier you are when you when you're moving around like that. It's just cause you have that much weight on you and everything you do is amplified <clears throat> tremendously uh, with that weight. So just it you know, I love I love Joe, so I think it's just hopefully it's not a, it's not a huge deal, and he's back sooner than later when he's healthy. So, yeah, uh, do you think it's just one of those things where injuries might be catching up, or is it just just a freak luck? That I mean, that, freak well, bad it luck. Comes, like, that schedule though, you're just performing so often. It's it really it's just an odds thing, and then once that stuff starts happening, and it gets in your head too, and it's not say it, it doesn't seem like he's had anything like huge, but it's been like little things over and over. Which I, I don't know. I can't tell you. It's like Christian. Christian never had an injury, I think, or anything serious for almost his entire career. And then it happened all towards the end. The concussions happened. I think he tore his pack or vice versa. And then he had just had to retire. Like, it's – or he chose to because they get the point. But Joe's not at that age yet, but he's had a long, long career. And the mileage of a professional wrestler that you put – you know, the wear and tear on your body is a very real thing. I couldn't tell you. I am not around him. I couldn't tell you. If, you know, if I was there and he's 
you can see him backstage and he's constantly got ice packs on him and you know what I mean which is a thing anyways there with guys but you can kind of tell how guys are doing by their demeanor backstage and whatnot. And I'm not there, so I couldn't give a fair, you know, fair insight onto that. So it could just be, I would say, just bad luck with everything. But yeah. Um, also, AJ Styles was injured uh, during the Royal Rumble match. Uh, he separated his shoulder. Uh, he talked about it on his Mixer channel. I don't know if you ever see those Mixer channels. It's no. it's weird. People watch people just playing video games. Um, <laughs> There's, I, I, I'm not one to talk. People watch me eat hot food right. and eat hamburgers in my car. So, but you're I talking like about I, it. I can't quite judge on that one, Raj. <laughs> but you're talking about it. A, I do positivity. Uh, it's for messages. I'm giving messages roller. out during it. It's more than yeah. eating an Impossible Burger. Yeah, maybe I'm just a boomer. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I don't play game. I, I understand. Yeah, it's a whole other. You know, if people like it, they like it. I don't know the conversations they're having on it. So, <laughs> I was obsessed with my NES back in the day. So I, I yes. guess yes. same. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, Styles talked about the injury. He said he uh, it would happen when he took the spear from Edge. Uh, Styles said he just oversold it. He really wanted to sell big for Edge. He said it's a hundred percent on. He blames himself a hundred percent. He thought he had dislocated his shoulder when it happened. But uh, that being said, he said it's not that bad, and that he will definitely be back by WrestleMania. He said he's not going to miss it, and he'll scratch and claw his way there if he has to. Yeah. So. I saw it, and it was, it was a hell of a bump, and everyone, that was a hell of a return. I actually text Edge, he messaged back, I was just like, that was the energy, man, I, uh, it was cool. But on top of the, the AJ thing, that that's a, a, when you do that, and I have a story, a quick one, with Ricardo Rodriguez when I was wrestling Alberto. When I would do the meat hook clothesline, I would want guys just to take a regular flat back bump. Because if they tried some guys always offer to do the backflip for me, and it's kind of twofold. I'd always say, and I learned this very early on by Rob Conway down in OVW. I'd heard, you never want guys to outshine your big move. So I would tell guys, nope, take a flat back bump. This is my moment. I don't want you trying to get yourself over in my moment. And that's because it is two. And the second part is I drive down with it when I'm coming down, and it's unsafe. And Ricardo didn't, we didn't. I just assumed he was going to take a flat back because usually guys would tell me if they were going to do it, and which I learned at that point then to always make sure they never did it. And he was just simply going out of his way to make the move look better in his mind. And when I did the move, I didn't know he was doing doing a backflip, and he ended up coming down on the back of his head. And I don't know if he got a concussion, or, but he ended up it was like it was dangerous. And, the, and then after and it wasn't he never held me responsible, and it, there's no way of you just it's a dangerous thing to do if a guy doesn't know you're going to do it either. AJ was just trying to make him look better. 100% not Edge's fault. He doesn't. He's, he's just coming in for the move. That's the guy's responsibility if that's planned beforehand to get himself and do the move and get over. But it's tough when you do that stuff and you got a guy delivering a move and you're trying to do a backflip. And you know what I mean? It, it's it, 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 you need perfect timing on that stuff. And that's a move where you're driving into the guy and you're stopping his momentum. It, it's not. It, it, it kind of doesn't doesn't fit right there. So you got to be smart enough too to know maybe that's not the best thing to do in that position, which AJ does know that. He's just simply really wanted to go out of his way for him. And, you know, I'm glad he didn't get seriously hurt. Not yeah. his fault at all on that, though. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, AJ making that clear. And uh, Edge, uh, yeah, Edge now back with the company. Um, it's a multi-year deal, uh, rumored to be three years. Um, apparently it's $3 million per year, which is um, one of the biggest deals in the company. Um, now, according to... Reports Edge apparently uh, started negotiating with AEW uh, last uh, last fall after okay. SummerSlam. Yeah, and uh, he came back to WWE, said that AEW is offering him three million per year. He would uh, be a talent and also work backstage. And then WWE, that's when they you know signed him. So um, yeah, uh, a lot of people thought Edge would never wrestle again. He was out there. He looked great. He was on the, uh, Raw this past Monday night doing one of the best angles I've seen on Raw in a long time with Randy Orton. So he's back in a big way. Absolutely. And, I, and like I said, I shot him a message just saying congratulations because it was, it was a cool moment with that. And he just said it was surreal. That yeah. You could see it in his face. Like That was, that was a cool moment. Uh, I think the big news in this is, this goes, so him getting $3 million per year, I'm absolutely, uh, that's fantastic. And he should. And that's still not, just so people understand how bad WWE are screwing over the regular talent on their pay, 
this guy's going to wrestle three times in a year, and what they're going to make money off of him, giving him three million per year. You need to just look at that and say, what the fuck are they doing to everybody that works? I never came close to making three million per. The best I ever did was making a little over a million. There, that was fucking getting whored out in, in the main event, like, and that that's low for that position. Like people, they you're making. I used to look at the, the the merch royalty sheets and see how much I was making them and go, holy hell! Like this is these numbers are like this is just just robbery. And, but it is what it is. But that uh, people need to understand. And the wrestlers don't. You don't have power. Edge is in a position where he was able to finally get a, a huge payday, more than he's ever gotten after being out for how long? You know what right. I mean? And he used the AEW thing, and he's brilliant. And he should. He could have gotten even more, I would imagine. But like that, just look at that. He's making three million for three matches, and WWE is going to be profitable on that brand. So all these guys that are there nonstop with all the action figures and everything that are making two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year that throw their souls away. Look at how fucked up the pay system is. That's what I just want people to look at and see. And I, because I guarantee you, there's wrestling fans who are like, oh, he doesn't deserve three million per year. No, motherfucker, they all do. They all do. Like, and it, it's more than that. And this this guy is collecting billions while everyone's fucking making ends meet on $150,000 a year for their first three years, sharing cars to four of them for no, for, at the highest level in professional wrestling. That's the one thing you got to look at. Edge, man, I'm completely, I want everyone to make as much money as humanly possible. But you guys, look at, you got to look at that at the end of the day, what's really going on in the bigger picture. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're seeing the, you know, whether you're an AEW fan or not, it is helping WWE yes. talent getting better deals. And, um, and we saw it here, we saw it with Randy Orton, who recently re-signed for five years after teasing going to AEW. Um, also at the Royal Rumble, Brock Lesnar and Matt Riddle, uh, reportedly had a, a confrontation. I, I mean, it was, it sounded more one-sided, um, before the Rumble, uh, Riddle um, has been calling out Lesnar for years, saying he's going to retire Lesnar. Uh, so Lesnar reportedly approached Riddle backstage, just said, uh, reportedly, this is what he said according to TalkSport. He said, kid, you might as well stop saying my name and tag me and shit because you and I will never work together ever. And that was pretty much the end of it. Um, Riddle apparently has backstage heat. He was in the rumble for less than a minute, got quickly thrown out. So a lot of people saying they think this is a work, think you'd have him look strong if this is a work and you're building to something with Lesnar down the road. But, uh, um, yeah, so uh, Riddle uh, kind of in the doghouse a little bit, even though on NXT he's getting somewhat of a push. He won, Him and Pete Dunne won the, the uh, Dusty Classic. But, again, he's in the tag team scene. That's not, you know, that's not uh, ever the biggest thing uh, in WWE. I'll tell you, that, you know, respect in pro wrestling is a very real thing. And, and, and you got people, Brock has been there for a long time. Brock is the big dog of WWE. Like as far in, so I'm going to just give you a scenario. If I was down in NXT or FCW and, you know, John Cena was on top. Let's say Stone Cold Steve Austin, because I, I mean Steve get along fairly well. Steve Stone Cold Red Hot up in WWE running shit. He's the champ. He, he's the man at, at the peak of his career. And I'm down in developmental. And I start, and social media exists, and I start running. Steve's a little bitch. I can't wait to go up there and retire Stone Cold. That little bitch. <laughs> like, and I just constantly keep doing that. Now, that might generate, see, this is where I think Riddle, if this is what he's doing, it generates buzz online. But the problem is you bury yourself. You think Stone Cold's going to want to work with me? Do you, right. have no way in hell. Or if he is going to work with me, it's going to be, the, it's not going to be anything for me. It, so there's a thing in pro wrestling where you got to know how to conduct yourself in, in a professional manner so that because until you get to those top most guys will never ever get to those top positions and I got to experience it for a year that man it's a whole other level of like and you got because you got to play that game of like not overstepping your bounds but you got to fucking know when to step up and like it's because you're trying to one guy's just deciding everything but those guys that like that are in Brock has the power with Vince. If Brock doesn't want to do anything, he's not going to... If he doesn't want to work with you, you're not working with him. Who's going to tell him otherwise? He has the best contract. He has the only contract where he, he seems to where he has an opinion on things because he's smart. And, and I, I just think you got to be careful. It, everyone wants to get over, but you got to play the game. Like, you got, you're down at... You're on level one still, man. 
you got to get on level fucking eight or nine before you can even start even kind of remotely doing that. But you got a guy, remember like Yoshitatsu on when 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 uh, Tenzai came up there and they had fake Japanese heat because Jap- Tenzai wasn't even Japanese, but right. he was doing the gimmick and Yoshi started like running his mouth on social media after Tenzai's getting a huge push on TV. What did they do? They just fucking threw him out there and jobbed him out right away. You don't do that. Like it, it's. <clears throat> So you got to know as a professional wrestler, man, like it, it's a fight you'll never win because at the end, this isn't in Riddle. I think it's not UFC. Like you're not gonna. It's not where if there's interest in a fight, Dana White can make that fight because they're, right. they're, you guys. This is pro wrestling and political bullshit, and like you got to navigate that shit, man. Yeah. And so again, it could be a complete work, and that could be a way to generate interest down the road in it. But I have a feeling from how Riddle has talked about him. And that just giving you those comparisons. If I was doing that with Stone Cold Steve Austin, he isn't going to want to work with me. Right? Why would yeah. he? He can make money with a, with fifty other guys ahead of me that right. aren't insulting him personally on social media. So, yeah. And your point is a hundred percent. With if you, this is your, if this is UFC, that's the thing to do is yeah. call out the top guys. This isn't. Uh, and you could be kept down even further if you're. It doesn't matter. Yeah, because it's a whole other world. Yeah. It doesn't matter how good you are, how good you think you are, how much the fans love you. I have experienced it at the highest level. It doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Lesson learned for him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he, he's had uh, spats with Goldberg in the past, an online spat with Chris Jericho. Where but the, bad, right. where he's like, it's not like you're working an angle. It's like really demeaning to the, it's disrespectful. Yeah. And it's like, it's not fighting at the end of the day, uh, right. as far as that goes, so. Yeah. Um, also at the Royal Rumble, um, Drew McIntyre won the Men's Royal Rumble. Um, apparently, at one point, uh, Roman Reigns was supposed to win it. The the rumored WrestleMania match is going to be Roman Reigns versus Bray Wyatt for the WWE Universal Championship. Drew McIntyre versus Brock, obviously, it's been announced now for the WWE Championship. So the spot was going to be Drew takes out Brock um, and then... Ends up getting eliminated later. Roman wins. And then they ended up changing it to just going all the way with Drew uh, to make that Drew versus Brock match even bigger. Um, so I, I think that's going to be hard to argue against because Roman got booed coming out um, that this past Sunday. I think it would have been deja vu all over again if they would have had Roman win. He's been getting booed. Again, it's been building. I think that the whole the cancer stuff has ran its course and people are now back on the – and they got to be careful with that. With that, and I think, in for what they did, I loved. I, I got to say, I enjoyed that Royal Rumble match. Yeah. With Brock, I wish. I honestly, Raj, my personal opinion, I wish they would have that kept that going. For that, it would have been the most memorable Royal Rumble for <laughs> that all the way through twenty nine guys. And drew it number. Can you imagine that reaction though if they did that the whole way through? Yeah. <laughs> but here's my, and I get why you don't do it also because you are running like the risk of. It will pay off, but is, is are people? I think it would have been awesome because Royal Rumbles are all the same kind of. Right. That would have been a great, great call on Drew. I'm more. I've been with him from down to developmental FCW and, and seeing everything he's gone through and getting himself back there, man, and, and busting his ass. My only thing is, is, is this going to be just a filler? It's a main event match, but just a wait because Drew's never been the quote unquote chosen one. He's not Roman Reigns as far as how they treat Roman. That's right. and they, we've seen that they changed. They had several people they were thinking about winning. That tells me that it's not necessarily this isn't to pull the the, the to to fire off Drew McIntyre for that and give him strap the rocket to him. It's a guy that has a believable shot, a good story going into WrestleMania to keep Brock as champion, which will suck for Drew momentum wise. It's great all the way up to it. Yeah. Um, but that's my thing is I, I we'll have to wait and see. It's really interesting. I li- mm-hmm. I like Drew getting the opportunity. Now Drew I think is in a position in politically where you need to this is a spot and just so people understand what's going on. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. If I were him, I would be you're gonna be working harder than ever, not in the ring but backstage, convincing everybody that who has a fucking opinion that you need to be the one to go over. But it's we're in a time and day and period, age and all that where that kind of has been taken away from the talent. Uh, so we'll see how he's used going into that. He's going to look great. He's in a great position. He's going to make good money going into this. But what happens for that? And Roman, I saw going with The Fiend, I'm hoping this is, and they used Roman to put over Drew, which was a great call. 
Yeah. Great call. They, they, they have to be listening to these boos with that. And I think this is a great time. I think you could actually use this to turn Roman heel eventually. You know, I think it would be a great opportunity and not make the same, the same mistake you made with Cena, keeping him baby face for so long. Actually let Roman get more. He'll get more over. Yeah. His character, he will be, he'll be more popular than he's ever been if they actually allow him to, to go that way. I, but I think you need to make this all about The Fiend going in. And The Fiend yeah. should be the one that maybe finally gets Roman to turn like Seth did. I think that's a cool story Yeah, down the road. So. And I, I think, I know they're on separate brands right now, but that's obviously easy to change. But a heel Roman versus a babyface Drew, I mean, could be money if it's done right down the road. And that's um, how you create compelling TV, though, and make new stars, though, Raj. That's yeah. what you need. That's what they used to do. But instead, they, they just push guys and they stop them and they keep everything the same. And that's why they're in this position that they're in. And to your point, that's uh, that's what I'm worried about with Drew uh, is the creative. If he, he's the Scottish psychopath. Uh, he should not be pointing at the WrestleMania sign and talking about what a big opportunity he is. He should just be talking about wanting to kick Lesnar's head off, in my opinion. And I he hope they keep not, it that way. shouldn't have changed. Yeah. This is the problem. This falls on the talent too, Raj. Guys got to know that when you, and I always tried to do this no matter what, that when you change and if they, they're going to put you in a baby face slot, you got to know to keep that edge on you and you can't, but it's like a wrestler, you're playing wrestler. Oh, I got to be a good guy now. Like, yeah. Don't change what made you. That's the thing. You're just now fighting the bad guys. Right. Don't, don't become a little bitch. Like, right. that, but that's, yeah. you got to keep that in your head. Like it, it's a tough thing until you, unless you're in that John Cena position for straight up baby. But you got to know it's a tough thing, man. It's not yeah. easy. I can tell you that because you, you got people telling you what to do. And I like Drew a lot, though, man. And he's believable. He, he's in great shape. And I, I think it's it's an interesting matchup. Anyone who ever goes up against Brock, how that yeah. match goes. So yeah, yeah I'll, I'll go a little faster here on these next few items just because <laughs> it still is a ton. Uh, but you know, uh, check out wrestling.com. All these are more. You know, we got in-depth articles on all these. But. Um, Apparently, it was down to Aleister Black or uh, Drew McIntyre to face Lesnar at WrestleMania. Um, I think it's clear, like, just a couple months ago, they didn't had no idea what they were doing because Drew just started getting pushed as a babyface, like, a few weeks ago. Um, uh, I got to say, it's uh, Aleister Black. Um, he, he's, I, I think he's got a cool character, he, and I could definitely see that down the road, but it, it would have been too soon, it seems like. I like Alistair a lot. There's something to him. He's got yeah. a. He's got. There's something to him when I watch him. He got. He has. A, he has cool music. Cool entrance. Uh, I don't know. I think personality wise, we need because he he got. He was doing those backstage things, and yeah. I remember he talked in the ring, and it seemed different to me. Him talking in the ring, got to get used to that. Like I'm, yeah. I'm just saying, like seeing him in different positions and different. I would like to see him talking a lot more too. Yeah. If he is going to, because they obviously they're going to let him talk. So, uh, I like him, man. He has great offense. He's a unique character. It's uh, he, he reminds me I, in a weird way. He reminds me of um, CM Punk in an odd way, kind of. Yeah. There's but in a different, but like he has that kind of. Uh, there's something to him for sure. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Uh, also, Charlotte Flair won the Women's Royal Rumble. Apparently, the original plan was to have Shayna Baszler win it. Uh, Shayna Baszler, the current plan, um, and this could always change, but is for Shayna Baszler to face Becky Lynch at WrestleMania. They kind of set up an angle for it at Survivor Series. Um, Charlotte Flair will actually, right now, the current plan is for her to challenge Rhea Ripley for the NXT Women's Championship. And then uh, for, and it's not quite known yet what the SmackDown Women's Championship is, although usually they have a multi-person, um, you know, a lot of multi-person matches at the show. No, I think that's, we'll, we'll see what dire direction they go with all of that. And, uh, you know, Charlotte has been, they've, they've used her well from the beginning. Yeah. I mean, she's always figured in. She's uh, on, on the top of that division, no matter what, or she's always at the, at the at, around in that. So it's uh, we'll see how those matchups go. I know they saw they dropped the women's title off the NXT thing, uh, which I was on the Keeping It 100 podcast this past week, and we talked about it a little, but not nothing too major. I, I don't really understand all of that. Yeah, um, I think it's just confusing for people. But I uh, Charlotte, man, yeah, she's always I, she's always delivered. I love Charlotte. She's a great person, and I know she probably gets shit from some of the uh, hardcore fans because of uh, you know who her dad is and how she's used. But she's never not backed it up. So, 
Yeah, and she uses that to her advantage to to help her character. The, the one problem I have with uh, her booking, how WWE books her, she's like a baby face one week, a heel the next. You can just never keep track. It's like keep her a show. heel. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's always the go to. I saw they go. Randy Orton's becoming big show. With it, he's, he's going right. back and forth. That's just what happens now. You just go back and forth. Arn yeah. told me too when I left right before I left Arn Anderson. They were, I was kind of tweener, but I thought I was staying babyface. And then the decision was he's, I was going to turn heel. And he goes, yeah, I don't like, he told me he didn't like it. He goes, I don't want to see you get big shows. <laughs> it's like, it's a term. <laughs> right. <laughs> the one thing with Randy Orton is he never goes to like slapping hands when he turns babyface. He still kind of stays more or less the same. He but. is a brilliant worker. And people, yeah. I'm telling you, I'll tell you another thing with Randy. If you watch his work in the ring when he sells, and how he'll sell little things, and he sells them for a period of time. Every fucking wrestler needs to be watching that stuff. All these guys that do all the flippity flops and don't fucking sell moves. Watch Randy. He'll do something and get hit in the jaw, and like two minutes later, he's still selling that jaw while doing something else. Like, you got it. That I, I love that stuff. That's yeah. old school wrestling psychology of putting over what the guy's doing, and he does it on everything. I, I like Randy a lot. I think he's. I think he, he's extremely talented. He always has been. Yeah. He gets uh, absolutely. Uh, Ronda Rousey, apparently, um, she is not going to be working WrestleMania 36. Uh, she's been doing a couple of interviews. Uh, she's been saying she uh, doesn't know if she'll come back, but uh, right now the plan is not for her to do anything, at, uh, to wrestle at least at WrestleMania. Enjoying her time off. That is, yeah. You got other girls there. She comes back, she'll she'll be plugged in, I'm sure. Yeah, she. I mean, she doesn't need the money, and she kind of lived out her dream, you know, being able to headline WrestleMania and do all that. So, her, and her husband, man, enjoying life. I, I see him all the time on Instagram. I was like, that. And then once you get out of that and do that for a year, and that's not your thing, anyways. She dedicated herself for a year, which is not an easy thing to do. People don't understand. She didn't like lived out her dream, but man. Enjoy that time away. Yeah. People, people, you don't need to go back there. Like nobody should want to go back there four or five days a week. I wish I could take every wrestling fan and just fucking throw them. They would all be dead within the first three days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, also, the Undertaker, uh, according to the Observer, he is—he's uh, not currently booked for a match on the card, but he has apparently been in talks with WWE officials for an appearance at the event. He didn't appear at all last year, uh, and then the year before, he did that quick thing with John Cena. Um, so yeah, he didn't appear last year, but I think, I can't remember if it was that following night or the week after where he did something with Elias on Raw where he squashed Elias, but, um, yeah, so maybe, uh, maybe take her at WrestleMania, but it's not, uh, it's not for sure yet. I would love to see that the Fiend go over Roman Reigns at WrestleMania and in his in-ring thing, lights go out and Undertaker comes out and I would like the Fiend, not for there to set it up though, the Fiend should retire Undertaker. Yeah. I, I honestly, so. they, they this is how you make your current superstars. You take the past. Undertaker, his value is reached the height it will ever be. And I think everyone, he's at a point, and I think in ring wise, and I'm sure he could get some more matches. But you got to, I think he is best used to help get a current talent and put them on a whole other leg and make them a legend. And that's what you, if I was at that point, I think that, I think, I don't think Undertaker would have any problem doing that with the right guy. And I think Bray has more than proven himself to be. A guy that can handle that so right yeah yeah i, I think that's a, a great idea I, but <laughs> you know with wwe <laughs> 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 right. um so uh luke harper his contract uh he was uh released in december uh, that's when it was officially announced december 8th he reportedly will be making his aew debut soon so uh 90 days from when he was released it would be march and it was reported in the observer that he is scheduled to appear on the march 18th episode of dynamite from rochester new york i love it a great pickup no I just i love it perfect yeah. timing everything yeah uh also this week uh andrade was suspended they did an angle on raw uh where he wrestled humberto carrillo for like the thousandth time uh andrade i mean they and they keep beating this carrillo guys a uh, humberto uh and so when you wonder why he's not over when he's coming out well, there's your answer but he does get take time too. They're gonna like a guy. He's young, but you gotta. I always say give a talent two years before you really. 
because he just got thrown up there, and he's not like you got to win to get over too. And they keep giving him U.S. title shots, which you look at it like from a sports perspective, he he loses every time, usually clean. How the fuck does Why? he get these titles? Who's right. he got some pull backstage? He just keeps losing, <laughs> and get these title shots. <laughs> right, he just lost clean at the Rumble, and gets a title shot the next night, and they still didn't give him the title, even though Andrade got suspended. I would for- love Humberto his entire career. Nobody knows who Humberto really is, but every pay per view he's fighting for a title, and he never wins. <laughs> His entire career. <laughs> He's not involved in storylines. He just shows up for the title defenses, and he puts guys over for 20 years. Humberto Carrillo, Carrillo ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> He's heading in that direction. He's a talented dude, so I oh, hope Oh, I he... know. No doubt. No doubt. But I, you, how the hell does he get these matches? Yeah. So, uh, WWE, uh, it's interesting uh, who, how uh, there have been no wellness policy violation uh, uh, suspensions announced for a long time. Then all of a sudden, you've got Robert Roode. Um, uh, Primo, uh, and now you got um, um, Manuel Oropesa, who's Andrade, suspended for 30 days, effective last Monday for his first violation of the company's talent wellness policy. So uh, they're keeping the title on him during this time off, um, but they did an injury angle where Humberto DDT'd him on the concrete, just like Andrade had did to him the month before. And it, it just makes the Humberto thing even funnier. Poor Humberto, the guy's getting suspended, his opponent, and he can't even have the title for a month. Just like, no, God, no, God damn it, no. Humberto puts him over. Like, it's like the, uh, that, it's good for Andrade that they feel they want to keep the title on him, even that. So who knows what it was for? I couldn't tell you. Uh, I don't, I have no clue. It could be anything. And it, yeah. could, it could just be a fluke thing. But. Enjoy the time. It's a, it's a little mini vacation for a month. Enjoy it as that. And then uh, when you come back, you know, and keeping the – they obviously are keeping the plans intact. And the, currently the plans are clearly not to put the title on Humberto because they would have just fast-tracked that if that was the case. Right. Or Humberto. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> um, uh, so, uh, final thing here. Uh, we got to talk real quick about ratings. Raw was up slightly, uh, only 1% from last week, which is, is you know, got to be disappointing considering uh, it's the post-Rumble Raw, which traditionally has been one of the highest rated episodes episodes of the year um dynamite beat nxt once again uh even though dynamite it was their lowest uh viewership so far this year but oh, really? they still beat nxt by 16 percent. dynamite did 828,000 viewers nxt did 712,000 uh both shows getting hurt by the news coverage of the impe- impeachment hearings but um Dynamite still did a 0.34 rating in 18 to 49, while NXT did only did a 0.22, so it topped NXT by 55 percent in that prime demo. Those shows are close. I mean, they're close. That, that those numbers aren't you know all that far apart. It's, yeah, it, it, they've ne- they've come together as the time has gone on here fairly well. So I don't know. It, it's just. <laughs> AEW just has to keep doing, just keep trying to figure things out, and like I said, get some of these guys start signing on, and in creating compelling storylines and making stars. Yeah, which is just going to take time. So, yeah, just I, see where they go with it. Yeah, the the bridge is it's definitely been narrowing the the last few weeks. You know that that January eighth episode of Dynamite did nine hundred forty thousand viewer, nine hundred forty seven thousand, then nine forty, and now we're down to eight twenty eight. Again, some of that's probably impeachment, but I think Dynamite uh, it's easy to watch, entertaining, but probably need a, a a few bigger bigger things to happen on that show. And I think it will. I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna be open to it. You know, and you start getting in WWE contracts will start coming up. They're gonna. It, it, it's just they got to just stay afloat, keep doing what they're doing, and I think as they get more guys, my thing is what they need to do is create stars. That mm-hmm. like, that's the what's missing from wrestling. And you got Jericho, and you got you know you got Moxley over there, and you got Cody, but you need to you got to elevate guys even more, and that's in doing things outside of pro wrestling as well, raising your stock as much as possible so that people tune in to see that brand and see that character and. So we'll see. I just, I, I, like we, we've seen a lot of good come from them being around from just with up for the talent on the talent end of things. So, yeah. Uh, well, there you have it. Next week uh, is going to be huge. We got the earnings call coming up. The XFL will be debuting. We'll see how that affects uh, WWE. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, and who, who do you got for the Super Bowl? 
Man, I'm uh, I, I'm so out of the loop on everything. I know it's the it's the Chiefs and the 49ers, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna root for. I'm going for the uh, the Chiefs because old Phoenix Marie, that's her team. So I uh, I would like to see her get a get a W. She that would make her happy. So the uh, we're gonna go with the Chiefs, which I will watch the game on that here. I, I, that's the one game I watch from beginning to end, usually every year. So. And more importantly, who do you got between the Seattle Dragons and the D.C. Defenders for XFL opening night? <laughs> give, me, give me the big guys' picks for week one on the XFL. <laughs> Wait, what are the teams, Raj? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Are the Outlaws so. back? <laughs> I'm going with the Outlaws. He hate me. That's uh, <laughs> uh, Anything you want to go ahead to plug, Raj, to wrap up? Yeah, check out WrestlingInc.com as always. Uh, we've had uh, got some great interviews with Jake the Snake Roberts, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Tugboat, uh, a, a lot of uh, Carrie Silken from ROH, um, Davy Boy Smith Jr., uh, just a ton of stuff. So, uh, Jazzy Gabert, who just for a release. So, a lot of cool stuff coming up. So, check that out. Good Wrestling deal. I appreciate it as always, Raj. And, guys, we'll be right back after these messages. Thank you to the GOAT, Ed Cohn, for coming on this week. Hell of a conversation. I really got to talk to him for a bit off off, uh, off air. And I've, I've, I've spoken to him before. Uh, just what a fantastic human being. I, just, I love being able to talk to people like this on the show that have achieved just such a massive level of success. But they're, and you see them, you talk to them, and you see what kind of human being they are. That's always, uh, to me one of the cool parts and seeing their mindset and you know they're at the end of the day that they're good human beings uh big thank you to raj giri as always a lot of wrestling news this week there's a lot going on guys this is just it's been a hell of a week i do want to say we got some really cool guests coming on here i'm hoping to get uh james wilkes from game changers been talking to him about getting him on I got a call here this afternoon with uh, Damon John's team, Damon from Shark Tank, and uh, about getting him on on with his new book coming out, and uh, getting more and more people is uh, just from all walks of life, not just professional wrestling, but all, you know, we've had doctors on here, and people from the health and fitness world, and it's... uh, just continuing to grow and evolve and try to try to learn a thing or two here big dumb wrestler over here big thank you to real good foods pay in the bills as they like to say as i like to say realgoodfoods.com say 15 percent with discount code ryback they got the cauliflower pizza low carb pizza enchiladas breakfast sandwiches poppers jalapeno poppers Enchiladas, they got the, the bacon wrapped chicken, stuffed chicken breast, uh, different uh, flavors uh, and varieties on that stuff, guys. And so if you're doing a low carb keto diet or if you are doing carbs, their cauliflower pizzas are phenomenal and uh, can't say enough good things about them. Check them out. They're, they've been a sponsor of this show for, for quite a long time now. And I enjoy, I enjoy their products and what they do. They do a lot of good things in the community and on social media, so give them a follow on there. And if you want to check out realgoodfoods.com, Ryback, to save 15%. And they're in stores everywhere. they got a store locator as well on their website, I believe, there. And you can, uh, they're usually now, they're pretty much in the majority of all stores in the frozen food aisle, and uh, you can check them out for yourselves. Feel Meals, my personal meal prep service. Feelmeals.com, save 15% with discount code, the big guy. Meal prep at your doorstep. If you guys are, you know, cooking and you're, you're trying to eat healthy and you're having a difficult time with that, 
and, and bringing meals to work and not knowing, you know, having to worry about eating out and staying track and counting your calories, check out Fuel Meals. They got a lot of options on there, guys, and uh, see if maybe that's something that, that, if that can work out for you or not. Feed Me More Nutrition, my personal supplement line on feedmemore.com. You can save 10% with the discount code PODCAST10 if you are a regular customer. All new customers, you could save 20% on your first order with discount code NEWCUSTOMER at checkout on feedmemore.com. Everything has been shipped off, uh, and it went out on Tuesday this week, actually, and it will be arriving uh, here today as I'm finishing this podcast. And hopefully they will be uh, taking over taking over the orders at some point next week. So I'm just kind of final, finalizing uh, things on my end. We took a bunch of inventory to hold us over here for hopefully two weeks. We are on feedmemore.com. The chocolate I so hungry is out of stock. It is available on Amazon still. We are actually, the reorder is going through now. The, the labels are being delivered next week to the manufacturer. It's a whole process when you do this stuff and you gotta do labels, labels, get done, get shipped to the manufacturer. Manufacturer then does the product, has to label everything, has to box everything, pallet it up, and then that has to be shipped, now not coming to me anymore, but going to the manufacturer in St. Charles, Illinois. Then they gotta get inventory, unload it, and you know, inventory it, and it, it's a process. And especially now as we scale, and we've already, like I've already pulled the, 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 the trigger on this with marketing even further, now that I'm not gonna be uh, having to do every little thing. So this is going to get ramped up really quickly. So I, I, please bear with us as I'm really like getting reorders in on time and knowing and, and things sometimes get delayed a little bit and keeping products in stock. It's a, it's a, it's a, is this, the bigger this gets and the more products I have, the it, it's work and I have, it's, it falls on me though. So I'm just trying to, like I've said, I've been learning from day one with all of this and uh, of, from the entrepreneur side of things. And I'm constantly reading and learning and applying and uh, where I am now to where I was three years ago is night and day. And to be able to look at, at financials and, and understand the reports and see, you know, what changes have to be made here and there and, and profit margins and it's, you know, just all of it. So, and then this having them and I'm still doing customer service because it's, I like being able to directly deal with that. Uh, and I obviously I have my little team around me that does help on other things tremendously that, uh, eventually though, the fulfillment center will, I, that's an option. I'll have them taking over the, uh, the phones and the, the emails just because and it's and that's going to be happening very soon as well i just wanted to get the first step get everything over get it transferred over and then uh we're off to the races here and uh i could just make decisions and you know keep this thing going in the right direction guys so thank you to all of you guys that have supported that and like i said i'm not trying to sell you guys anything i'm trying to persuade you to improve your lives i i use this stuff religiously morning to night and it was created for me out of a necessity uh in real life, dealing at the highest level, I feel like in the most difficult job in the world, uh, where, and in nothing against any other company, and, but like I'm, in, I'm I, I, these were created in the battlefield. This isn't like a guy like or a guy. You know, not, no judgment, how whatever people want to do and put into their bodies, but uh, and then I, and not lying and saying no, this is what I'm taking. This is why it's a bunch of bullshit a lot of times, and it is what it is. It's not what I'm doing. So, and if you try the products and use that, you see that. And, and I'm very confident in that. So, and I think reviews speak highly of what other people think of, of that as well. I do want to say, guys, before uh, final plugs, my do my feed me more motivation here. I think that's what we're calling it now. The thought of the week: feed me more motivation. And uh, this week, unfortunately, uh, I'm not going to do anything with the quote book, or it's just more, uh, you know, with the, with the passing of of Kobe Bryant and his daughter, uh, and and. Uh, the other family and people on that helicopter. It was, uh, you know, I grew up watching Kobe. He was a few years older than me. And uh, it's a difficult thing. I was on Twitter and I was doing my social media work in the morning and I saw the TMZ thing pop up and I thought it was just a joke. I was like, there's no way. And then it started popping up more and more. And then I, I go, shit, I did a search and started seeing more and more stuff and then it was all being quoted though being the TMZ thing I go so maybe they're wrong and uh and then it 
was like confirmed in multiple things and from other sources and it's like holy shit then they had the footage and as far as afterwards and you know I think it's uh, nothing but I, I send out nothing but just you can't help but feel for the families and everyone involved and you know and Kobe's wife and, and their other daughters that their life their lives are drastically have drastically changed and I think for any of us that you know I know certainly for me can't even imagine if you just your family's just taken away from you um, and trying to figure that out and have it make any sense which I don't think it ever will it's um I I, I just nothing just heartfelt condolences to everyone involved and I always and I was talking to somebody else about this for me I think you, you you try to make sense of something that doesn't make sense because that's I think what we do as humans and uh, I look at it I go well this guy maybe and it's it's fucked up regardless there's no other way but I, I go to what sense could I make of this and I, I just said this guy was put on this earth uh, and achieved a massive level of success that's what we see um, but I this horrific uh, incident occurred and I think the one you know drawing a positive from this extreme negative is I feel like there's been a worldwide um, he's caused inspiration worldwide everyone I think and it, I think everyone it, it's a wake-up call to everybody that I think uh, that, that money and all that, at the end of the day, love and happiness is um, should be the end game, should be the goal. And to treat people well, to be good human beings as much as we can. And we're human, we're going we're gonna to be judgmental at times. And But I think at the end of the day, we have to kind of just like realize like, hey, this shit can be over any fucking day. It doesn't matter who you are. It, it, it literally doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you do. It could be over any day. So to be grateful for each and every day. And I know for me, that's what it really, I, I, how you can't draw inspiration from that and, and feel. And uh, it just kind of made me look at, you know, what am I doing? What can I, what can I do to get even more out of every day? And um, that, to me, that's the only way to look at it. And obviously I'm not, and it, it's in uh, the other end for the families. I can't even, it doesn't make sense. I mean, it won't. So there's no, no point of trying to that. And it's just, I hope to God that they can uh, do, overcome it with time and ne they'd never overcome it as far as, the, but um, you see with people in life, the people that go on to inspire uh, the masses like, and do great, great things and become just exceptional human beings tend to have come from really bad situations. So that for me is my hope that everyone involved with all of this and the families can somehow use it as the inspiration and motivation to, to help others even more. Um, Cause there's no other way to look at it. I don't really know, you know, and uh, man, I grew up watching that guy. I love those uh, Lakers guy. And I've never been like a huge basketball guy or anything, but I enjoyed watching. And man, I love I love greatness and people that uh, work ethic. And I think if you see the videos of uh, a lot of the things that he did behind the scenes and uh, the amount of lives that he touched, and, and it's uh, and I'm sure as everyone involved did. I just think Kobe was on camera a lot more. And uh, man. It's, uh, it's a crazy world we live in, so my heart goes out to everyone involved. I'm, I'm truly sorry, and it's uh, we got to take advantage of each day, guys. We really do. It's uh, it just makes you think. That's all. I mean, I, every day, it, and I didn't know them. I had no interaction with them, but I think about it every day because it's just like fuck. Whew, it's rough. So, and then for the kids out there and stuff, and don't be one of those that I saw some people making jokes on online on social media, and don't do that. It's not, it's not, it, it, don't do that. Because that shit will come back to bite you in the ass. Don't do that. Be better than that, and 
don't be a piece of shit. And with that, guys, wrap up this week's show. Uh, I'll fan mail anything, guys, to go ahead and uh, if you have any challenges you'd like me to do for Ryback TV, you can send it to uh, Feed Me More LLC or Ryback Reeves at P.O. Box 752740, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89136. Uh, for personal videos from myself, cameo.com slash the big guy Ryback. For any media uh, appearances or anything of that nature, book the big guy at yahoo.com. Follow me on uh, Ryback TV on YouTube. We, uh, I believe we're gonna, we are gonna will hit 200,000 subscribers right around when this comes out. Or we're going to be really close. So thank you guys very much for that. And like I said, the goal is to get to a million for this year. That is, I would truly like to do that. And I will say too, guys, for reviews of this show, if you could um, please leave reviews, what we're going to do, and I'll start it next week, is uh, I'll, I'll read a review of the week, and the winner uh, will get a signed copy of uh, my book, Wake Up, It's Feeding Time, available on Amazon in paperback, audible, and Kindle formats. But uh, we're going to start giving out a, a prize every week uh, for the best, for the review that I choose, and I'll, I'll do that on iTunes and it, we need to get those uh, the goal for reviews is I want 1500 reviews by the end of the year and uh, I, Chris Van Vliet is going for a thousand on his and his podcast is much newer than mine and I've been here we need to get we need to get the reviews up and I got I got a, they used to be good when we used to give away stuff so we're, we're giving away we're giving up a book I don't know if that's going to help or not <laughs> so uh, yeah check that out guys and please share this we're trying to get over 100,000 downloads per week on the audio. That is the goal uh, for me this year on this show and keep this thing growing. Social media, the big guy Ryback22 on Instagram, Feed Me More Nutrition, Conversation with the Big Guy, and Ryback TV on Instagram. I'm Ryback22 on Twitter, Feed Me More Nutrition on Facebook, Ryback247 on Snapchat, and the big guy Ryback22 on TikTok. Uh, guys, I can't thank you enough for listening. You've just listened to another episode of Conversation with the Big Guy Ryback. Feed me more. Thank you guys very much for watching Ryback TV. If you could smash that subscribe, hit that like button, share this channel, and for Feed Me More Nutrition on feedmemore.com, save 10% with Podcast 10. Click here for my podcast, Conversation with the Big Guy Ryback, available on all podcast platforms. Click here. And for more videos of yours truly on Ryback TV, click here. Feed me more.